and we are live happy wednesday everybody welcome to another stream oh man uh i, I last couple of weeks everyone uh, not everyone but i've had people ask uh are, are you okay and i think that <laughs> i'm gonna get that today i i started working on this last night um i originally wanted to get the ac wiring done um ac is something i definitely don't like doing on stream, especially because anyone that knows me and knows how distracted I get, it is just an accident waiting to happen. So um, I started wiring up the bed, um, the AC for the bed, and then I wanted to cut out a panel. I had done a little bit of acrylic uh, cutting on a CNC machine a few days ago, I was really happy with it. So Turtle sent over the acrylic panel, uh, or the DXF file, I think it was a DXF file for the panel. I cut that out and then I started working on wiring a bit more and um, then I started thinking to myself, well, uh, the image takes a while to flash, it's usually, and I have to use that computer, so let's flash the image for the CB1. Well, then the CB1 wasn't working. It was one of the old CB1s I got like months ago when they were having issues, so I did a new CB1, and then I was like, let's check to see if some of the things are working, and then I let out some smoke, <laughs> and I realized that the issue is uh, I set myself up for failure. When I originally did the conversion to the Mercury 1.1, I had to extend a bunch of the wires from the tool head and the wires I had, I ironically for how much 3D printing stuff I do, I don't have a great selection of wires. And so the wires that I used were different colors and in my head looking at it, I said, okay, I think that I would have used this for that and this for that. Well, I, I didn't. And the, um, the layer cooling fan, when it kicked on, I, I definitely killed the fan controller for one of the ports on the Manta. And I panicked last night thinking that I destroyed the board, but luckily, it was just one of the fan controllers um, and I just moved over that fan one more port. There's like seven fan controllers on the Manta MAP, so that is good, but it has been it has been a very long 24 hours. Um, I, I didn't stop working on this till after 2 a.m. and I finally said, okay, let's, let's leave this and continue tomorrow. So uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, Rod's here, Loss, Lisa, Alien Pies in the house, Nick Nick, Del Mar, uh, Booty's here, Killer Prince is here, uh, Jose is here. Hope everyone is doing awesome. Yeah, I, um, I, it was, it was a lesson learned. I, I should know better. Labeling your wires is crazy important. And if you don't know the exact things your wires go to, you should always double check. But I was really confident that I would have used, I think it was, yeah. So one of the, um, one of the limit switch wires, when I extended it, I used black and red, which when I saw black and red wires, thought to myself, there's no way I would have used the black and red for the end stop that it has to be the layer cooling fan. Not the case. Uh, the layer cooling fan was a green and blue wire. So yeah, lesson learned. Um, uh, let, let's, let's take a look at what's going on here. So I'm pretty happy with a lot of <clears throat> kind of what what we did so last week we finished installing the hydra um so last night i uh got all of the ac wiring for that done i mounted the uh, the fuse i did go ahead and uh went a little crazy and grounded grounded everything so let's just confirm if i go you probably won't be able to hear the beeping because of the um filter but the bed is grounded the frame if I get access to the frame like um, let's see if I go right here uh, uh, um, yeah frames grounded everything's grounded uh, which is awesome I got that done uh, it was my first time this is actually my first build using din rails um, which is wild I just the switch wire didn't use them um, the most of the, the builds I've done have just used like VHB tape and wire channels so uh, I definitely see the appeal of using the DIN rails. Um, it's so nice being able to just snap things into place and easily move them. But yeah, we've got the power supply mounted. We've got all of the, it's hard to see this, but uh, all of the, uh, let's see. Nope, you guys can't really see that. There we go. Uh, all the wagos are mounted right here. We got the SSR. We've got the Manta M8P. Um, super happy with how this turned out. I got to show you guys this. If you, if you follow on Twitter, you've probably seen it, but uh, last night I cut out the top panel. I didn't cut out the bottom panel because I'm thinking about sourcing uh, white acrylic for the bottom panel to sort of go with the the color theme. Um, this is also a little bit on the dusty side or, or a little bit on the um, 
I didn't wipe it down very well after, so I can get this in here. So I've got the, uh, there we go, the acrylic cover. Um, and I went ahead and I threw on a V-bit and did the Zero G logo, uh, which turned out awesome. I was a little bit worried that I was maybe going to either go too deep or not deep enough with the, uh, with the engraving on that. But the cool thing is if I, let me see here, if you shine light on the side, you can see, maybe it's hard to show on camera, I suppose, uh, but with acrylic, engravings really light up. You can't see it very well. <laughs> you might either just take my word for it because of the reflection, but um, I'm hoping to get some LEDs installed down below uh, to hopefully light up the logo. The only thing is, is normally you want to light up the acrylic from the edge, and because of the way it is, I don't think I'm gonna have LEDs on the outside, so we'll see how it ends up looking, but uh, I'm really happy with I'm <laughs> never worried about going too deep. Yeah, I knew when I said that, that was going to, uh, you know, I was gonna <laughs> get taken out of context. Um, edge lighted with NeoPixels. Yeah, I think uh, with that transparent panel, you have to invest a lot of time on neat wiring. You do, or you have to just settle and realize that your wiring is never going to look that great. Um, yeah, my game plan is I, I'm probably going to be installing um, LEDs into the top, just, just white LEDs. Um, for the print area and then i would love to do some kind of i, I don't have neopixels i i don't think or individually addressable leds but i do have a bunch of rgb led strips in the garage that i purchased a long time ago so that'll probably be going uh that'll probably be going down below um aside from that i'm trying to think if there's anything else that is new um beds mounted we we did that pretty much last week but i uh i did use a um, hey, uh, Matthew, thank you very much for the gifted membership. Uh, Shaddle, you got uh, the gifted sub. Thank you. Hey, David, how's it going? No shame in going crazy with the Dymo label printer. Yeah, I, I think that, um, so with the, let's see here. So with the wiring, I'm primarily going to just um, bunch, a bun like bunch segments of it together using zip ties, try to hide some of it underneath things. Uh, the reason why I haven't done more yet, uh, well, time I ran out of last night, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be going with uh, CAN bus for the tool head. Uh, I do have the Big Tree Tech CAN bus board um, that we could use for the tool head. I think if I just print out some spacers for the stepper motor, then we can probably go that route. Um, and we may end up doing that. Uh, maybe maybe we'll play around with that next week. I don't have experience. I, I know a fair bit about CAN bus, but I haven't actually installed one on any printer. It's been something on the list for a long time. So maybe we'll end up doing that. I just also don't know what that's going to be like with the CB1, but we can struggle through it together, I suppose, which, um, which could be fun. Um, RGB makes everything look like you traveled into the future. I agree. Uh, just get some contact vinyl for it uh, attached to the underside contact vinyl for it attached to the underside interesting uh you mean on the underside of the logo to help with the light hey what's up Britalian? uh so yeah today the game plan is a couple things that we need to do um so for one we need to do firmware things um for the second thing we need to do is so can, how high up can i get you guys not high enough. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, hmm. How will I show you guys this? <laughs> Let's see. I can if I put the tripod as far up as it can go. I should have I should have gone with the bigger tripod today. Um, okay, so check it out. If we go. Hey, uh, thank you very much for the gifted membership. Alien, you got a membership. Thank you, Ham. Um, on about which version of the tool head board uh, I can show you in one second here I've got it in my in the in the closet right here so let me see if I go to manual focus and we focus out basically what I'm trying to show is that the uh... <laughs> oh man I really you know what let's um let me grab some spools of filament let me see if I throw you guys on uh, a couple boxes of filament if we can get you tall enough I forgot that when we were working on this printer um, and it's all the way up, we don't exactly have enough height on the shorter tripod. And all right, let's see. Bear with me. Everyone's going to, you guys are going to have a little bit of motion sickness here, I think. Let's see. 
All right, this isn't sketchy at all. There we go, okay. So, this is the issue. This is the clicky probe. And if you look at this bed, it, oh wow, uh, PF Dennis, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Uh, who, let's see, uh, Skydown, uh, Britalian, Low Sonic, Jose, and Nick Nick, you, you all got memberships. Thank you very much, thank you for the support. Um, so the issue is, is that the dock now goes over the bed. Uh, so we cannot print without the bed going through the clicky probe dock. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is, and the good thing is, is that when I initially printed out this dock, um, uh, I printed out the shortest one, I realized that was incorrect, printed out the medium one and realized that was incorrect and printed out the longest. So I have all of the docks. So all that we need to do really is move this one, place the shortest one in and then change our um, docking position or like where the dock is. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, but we should, well, the thing I want to do is get this clicky probe working before we switch it over, uh, just to make sure everything is working correctly. Because even though it's too high up to print, it's not too high up to grab it and then use the probe um, to verify that it's working. And as of right now, it's not working. I, I checked it last night and it was not working the way that, <laughs> the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, hey, nice. <clears throat> so uh, your laughter reminds me of yeah, Hibbard from The Simpsons. Makes me laugh. Hib How do I not know who that is from The Simpsons? I, I grew up watching The Simpsons and recently revisited revisited The Simpsons. I'm started on season one. Let me see. Hibbard Simpsons. <laughs> that's awesome. It's the doctor. <laughs> that's so, that's great. <laughs> Usually when I think of uh, The Simpsons and laughter, I think of like, uh, like, I think it's Nelson, right? The ha <laughs> ha or uh, Bart and his laugh. That, that's great, I'll take it. So uh, what we've got so far is, this is the old config. Uh, I did screw up <laughs> last night when I should have gone to sleep. I was playing around with a few of the things and uh, some of the pins are screwed up, which doesn't matter because we're not using the, this is for the stock, um, the stock 4.2.2 board, but but I do want to reference it. And then Luke, uh, who I don't think uh, Digital Dragon is not in chat. I haven't seen him yet today. Uh, he sent me over his config um, for his Ender 5 Plus, which is running the Hydra setup with the Mercury 1.1. So I did reference that for a couple of things. Uh, so yeah, today we're gonna be playing around a lot with the config. So let's start off by, uh, let's power this on. So let me see here, we'll flip the switch. Everything powers on. And we'll just run through and test uh, test things out. Because I did test out some things last night, but again, I was, <laughs> I was pretty tired when I got to the final firmware stuff and I'm not entirely confident um, that I checked everything very well. So let's first make sure, uh, we'll check for the limit switches. We'll check for the fans. Um, X and Y direction should be fine, but we'll double check that. Heating up. We'll check that and then the fun stuff which is getting the clicky working again and then the hydra which is uh which is it so <clears throat> i was sorry i had a squirrel moment and went to see if i could figure out where micro center is building oh is micro center uh micro center is expanding a new location by you lisa uh not a man but the man yes I'm <laughs> Uh, last night when I should have gone to bed, but I kept tinkering and said, yeah, it's funny. I, I honestly, I started working on this. Uh, I was talking to Turtle about when I was um, doing the AC for the bed, which was probably like six o'clock my time. And then I had dinner, um, watched a show with Erin. And then at like nine o'clock, I said, do you think it's too late to run the CNC? And she, and she said, no, if the garage is closed, you're probably fine. So went out, did the CNC, came back inside, was super jazzed about that. And then just it, one thing led to another. I think most all of us can relate to that. Uh, I could use a microphone closer to me. Okay, so let's see, we should be, uh, so I think the IP is 192.168.160.119, bam. Hopefully. 192.168.160.119, I think that's it. Uh, let's see, wait. <laughs> oh man, we're off to a great start. <laughs> It would help. It would help if I plugged in power supply. Oh god, this is why this is why I don't do AC wiring on stream. We can hardly we can hardly plug in power supply. 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's going on, Timor? I uh, don't know, but they're building four locations. That's sweet. <clears throat> uh, Aaron is doing pretty good. We had a doctor's appointment on Monday, and um, Aaron, both Aaron and I are convinced there's no more room for him to possibly grow. But the doctor said uh, it was a very short visit because the doctor is on call, and during Aaron's checkup, he had to go deliver a baby. And um, so he basically was like, yeah, I can, like, the head's here and uh she, he was telling Aaron that you're gonna start you're gonna start like this next month like have more cramps and like have a hard time walking you'll probably start to waddle and me and Aaron just looked at each other like what have the last 30 days been then because she's had all of these things for the last 30 days so um I the due date is end of March um but the original um the original technician that did the original ultrasound said ultrasound ultrasound said March 15th. Uh, so I, I don't think he's going to make it till uh, March, the end of March. So we have our go bags ready to rock and roll. Um, someone recommended snacks. We do have some snacks in the go bags. And I did get the uh, I did get the car seat hooked up. Uh, so we're ready to rock and roll because you need that to take the baby home. Um, I, I am incredibly thankful for YouTube. I don't often look at um, non electronic stuff. Well, that's not true. I look at other stuff. But I, I had the instructions for the car seat and anyone that thinks building printers is hard should try to build baby stuff because the instructions are so bad. Uh, but I'm looking at this tiny booklet, right? Like this big, like, I don't know, 80 pages. And I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. I found a 60 second short that taught me how to install the, uh, the car seat correctly. So thank you to whoever did the baby short, but yeah. Uh, hey, Steve's here. Hey, Steve. It's funny, I, I, um, I was talking to Steve yesterday and Steve, uh, I messaged him because I was stoked on the uh, acrylic and Steve said he went to bed early last night and I don't know if you saw Steve, but I was up till, uh, I was up till like 2 a.m. working on this thing last night. I just, I got started and was like, ah, I gotta do the next thing and gotta do the next thing and flashing the firmware is super boring and uh, I'll just do that tonight and then, you know, it was late. Uh, I got the Z, uh, 0 0.1 all packed in the go bag. Yes, I've got baby's, baby's pin ready to rock and roll. Hey Sam, uh, we also talked about, uh, he just has the beard and glasses left to grow. Exactly. <laughs> um, oh, so last a couple things. Um, Delmar had asked about the Big Tree Tech boards. Um, Big Tree Tech did send out both the, I'll just show it. Uh, so we got this and then what the heck else was I gonna show? Um, these are not one. No, these are linear rails. Where are, um, <laughs> there it is. Let's take this, take this, and take this. So, um, I've got uh, side camera. Have you 3D printed anything baby related yet? Um, have I 3D printed anything baby related? I don't think so, no. Um, nothing yet. If anyone has any recommendations, let me know. Uh, I did do some laser stuff. I had cut out um, baby hangers, like to, to move the clothes uh, by age group, but. They didn't turn out that great, and um, all of the clothes are going into bin things instead, so we're probably not going to be using it. Um, uh, no, and then I tried to, I tried and seeing out a Stein for him, um, just with the like the letter J for his name, uh, that I wanted to do like an epoxy pour fill thing, um, but it was in it was in uh, oh god what's the cheap it's basically like particle board and it has a laminate layer I can't think of what it's called right now, uh, but it. The issues I had with that was that the uh, ball end mill was leaving uh, lines basically. Like, so even if I had a small step over, there was still obvious lines. And then when I used a flat end mill that made the bottom look really nice, it was tearing that vinyl layer. So I picked up a different end mill or a different cutter um, that's supposed to not be so aggressive. I think, I think it's, it's a compression bit. I picked up a compression bit, um, but I haven't got a chance to rerun it yet. Melamine, yep, yep, that's it. Melamine, that's what it was. I picked up some melamine to practice on, um, and it's just, it's fine, uh, but man, that laminate layer tears out really easily. Okay, so this is what I've got. Uh, let's go autofocus, cool. Okay, so we've got the U2C board, which it's my understanding that just about any 3D printer board needs one of these, um, even the Manta board. I, like, when I saw the, the Manta, E3, uh, E3EZ and it said cam capabilities, I thought, oh cool, you don't even need this board. 
I think I'm mistaken. I think you still do need this board and it basically is just saying that it has a connector on it from, from it to this. So, uh, so yeah, we've got the U2C board. Um, and then they sent over both the, both the, let's see, so these are V1.2s. I think that was your actual question. So we've got the EBB 36 and the EBB 42, and I believe the 36, yeah, so this is the one that we'll be needing for the, the rounded, um, for the rounded stepper motor. So it's this guy, which I think will be really nice to have on this printer. Um, especially because it has the, well, one, it'll clean up our wiring. Two, it has the ADXL built into the tool head. And I know you can just leave the ADXL on this tool head, but um, it's really discreet. And that way I can run input shaping, you know, if I move it around or do different mods to it, which I anticipate I'm probably gonna do quite a few things. Um, Base Manta needs U2C. Okay. Which one doesn't need U2C, Delmar? Because I was looking, um, I did, I didn't do a, a heavy amount of research, but I did do a little bit of research, and man, it was, it was pretty confusing. Um, it was, it was pretty confusing, it really was. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to do a lot of diving. If we play around with this on stream next week, it's going to be a lot of googling, and then me saying, uh, what next? So, hey, what's up, Losonic? Uh, 1.2 is the one with the DFU mode slash heater fix. Oh, okay, good to know. I did see someone posting about um, uh, a heater automatically turning on or something like that. That's, I think I think it was it was related to that. Um, and... <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Thank you very much for the donation, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa says, uh, repeat after me. I'm Oddbot will let you know when Jackson comes by canceling the live stream for two weeks at least. So when uh, when Jackson does come, I will absolutely be canceling at least one live stream. And I, I think it depends on, um, it depend, it, it's gonna depend on, um, so if he, like let's say we stream on Wednesday and he comes that night and then I have that whole week and then I cancel the next one, it's basically like two weeks. Uh, but if he comes like, the day before, I don't know. We're gonna play it by ear, but yeah, I will absolutely be canceling one. And the, the main gauge is going to be how how is Aaron doing, how's the baby doing, and um, how are we doing. So I, I won't, I will not. If I am needed to not do a stream for two weeks, I, I have no problem doing that. We we will we will definitely do that if needed. So uh, yeah, I was pulling these out to show you some. Uh, Lisa, thank you for reading your membership. Hi, hi to Monkey and Delilah as well. They are, they're doing, they're doing great. Uh, Monkey, they're, they're doing great. <laughs> Both the dogs are doing pretty well. <clears throat> hey, what's going on, Baron? Uh, play it by ear, cancel all you need. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to play it by ear. I don't want to say like definitively. Um, work seems like they're going to be giving me some time. I, I, they haven't given me exactly the amount of time. So I'm just, everything's up in the air, depending on, again, how hopefully uh, well things go and just, you know, how much I'm needed versus if the baby's just, I, I've been joking with Aaron the whole pregnancy saying the baby's gonna come out and be this like Zen, Zen Buddha baby that just just is like sleeping all the time and is really great. So if my, uh, if I've manifested a really relaxed baby, then maybe, uh, but if the baby's anything like me and it's like a, um, a bouncy ball bouncing off the walls, then yeah, I probably, uh, probably will need to uh, take a little bit more time. Uh, as a heads up, you have two USB-A ports and a USB-JST port behind the A ports, the USB-C on the board, on the main board. Wait, wait, wait. You have two USB-A ports and one USB-JST port behind the A port. USB-C on the board, on the main board. Oh, oh, okay. USB-C on the board, on the main board, not the CBB, okay. I think I get it, <laughs> Delmar. But when we do it, I will. I will be. I will be asking again. Yeah, let's hope he's a little Buddha. Everyone, please. Uh, yeah. So the reason we're gonna. I promise you, as soon as know this, we'll get. We'll jump right into it. We're 24 minutes in, and all I've done is talk about uh, other things. So uh, last week I was saying that the AliExpress package got lost, and I was super sad. Well, it got found. Um, so a few things came in. I've got the. These were. These are things I purchased off of AliExpress. Um, so this is the Mellow, does it have a name of it? Sem will know. Um, let me see here. 
Oops. This is... Why don't I see on the silk screening what you are? <laughs> what are you? It's a Fly Mellow RepRap firmware compatible board uh, with an STM32 chip. Um, okay, Fly E, that's what it is. It's the Fly E3 V3 Pro. Uh, so I've had quite a bit of questions about RepRap firmware over the years. And uh, now that the boards are super affordable, I wanted to pick one up. We're gonna be converting my other Ender 5 uh, Pro that's basically stock other than the Micro Swiss NG over to this board. And then I also picked up um, the, it should be compatible. It is a, wow, that looks bigger than three and a half inch touchscreen, maybe a five inch touchscreen um, for, for that board as well. So this showed up, which I'm pretty dang excited about. Uh, and then I got some, these are Mellow Gears. So they're not, um, I don't believe they're OEM Bontech. I think they're clones, but they seem to have good reviews. Um, I'm going to be uh, using these to build a uh, Sherpa Micro, which will be going onto the Lurge IX cantilever printer that has the Bowden extruder by default that I don't like. And then we're swapping out the hot end that's been having heat creeping issues with the Dragonfly. So these came in too, which I'm super excited about. Uh, so they'll be getting these along with linear rails instead of the roller wheels that they came with. Um, when, I don't know, because as part of it, I'm, pl I'm planning on uh, I've got some six millimeter thick aluminum plates that I ordered that I'm going to try to see and see for the first time. And um, man, I uh, definitely a bit more nervous about that than I than I was with the acrylic. So that's what's going on. That's what she said. Uh, what did I say now? <laughs> Anyways, let's get let's get to it. Let's get to the firmware stuff. Um, let's we should be we should be live now with the board. Awesome. Okay, so Mercury 1.1. We've got thermistors working. Let's uh, let's see. Make sure we don't. Let's add some heat. Let's just go up to like uh, 120. Take the bed up to 60. Okay, so heat looks like it's working. We're gonna have to do um, uh, PID tuning later on. Uh, if we go to the side cam, we should be able to see. Let me turn this. Yeah, so we've got our heat sink. Th oh, don't fall. <laughs> this, this printer is just exactly big enough for, for my table. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, of course, got it back on manual focus so I can choose what we focus on. All right, so we've got the heat sink fan is working, which is good. That's what we want to see. We've got, um, we overshot on the extruder, which makes sense because again, we, I haven't done any PID tuning yet so far, which we'll definitely have to do. The heated bed is climbing, which is also good. Uh, let's check out the, let's make sure that our fan on the back, oops. Let's see, go side. Let's make sure that our layer cooling fan is working. Yep, layer cooling fan is working. <clears throat> hey, how's it going, Nuno? Happy Wednesday. Uh, Aaron says, thank you everyone. I will I will need his help, no doubt, but you are a huge part of our lives too. Monkey and Delilah say hello. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, they're out hanging out there, Aaron. Hey, Petros. Yeah, I know, it was funny. Every, I've been, I've actually been testing out the, uh, the Sovol for a month now, roughly. Um, and I was planning on having the video go live. Someone asked me about it last week. I was planning on having the video go live next Saturday. So not this one, but the following, but it's actually getting pushed back another week. Uh, I discovered some things on it that are, that need some further investigation and I don't want to rush it. I want to make sure that I cover everything. Um, and the printer's live, live stream. I mean, yeah, the printer's live to pre-order and all the live streams have gone live. So I'm certainly not in a rush to get it out. I, I want to make sure I cover the things that I think are worth covering. Um, so yeah, the SVO6 Plus. I, I, I will say, if you want my summary of it, uh, I posted a bit of a rant in the uh, Modbot Army Discord yesterday under chat. Uh, I, I definitely like the regular SVO6 I don't want to say substantially better, but I, I like the printer better than the SVO6 Plus. 
Uh, there's a few things on there. Like, they, one didn't make any of my recommended changes, which is fine. Manufacturers aren't required to listen to my feedback or my reviews, but um, it was disappointing to see. And they made some changes that are actually worse, but, but can easily be fixed. Joel, Joel pointed out one. Um, the strain relief on the bed is pretty janky on this. It, it's They just need to cover the four bed wires. They're all loose and then just zip tied, which is better than not being zip tied, but it's not great by any means. Um, it, I mean, come on, like having decent strain relief is something really easy. <clears throat> and um, the fill, there's no power loss recovery, which if you watch my big printer review, um, is something that I think all big printers should have, even if it doesn't mean your prints will recover perfectly. Uh, there's no power loss recovery in the firmware and the filament runout sensor is a joke right now. It will pause your printer, but it doesn't lock the motors. And so, when you change the filament, you are going to shift it. Even if it's just a fraction of a millimeter, there is no way to remove that filament and load new filament without moving it a little bit. So you will lose your position, which is what happened. I can show, I'll show this, because I was so irritated. I, this, this was a um, 800 gram drawer print that was supposed to go on my desk uh, and be like basically a pullout organizer. And <clears throat> you can't really see it, but it, it didn't finish. It, the circle is supposed to complete and it has a tiny bit more. So it, it paused like it was supposed to. I was super excited that it, you know, did what it's supposed to and uh, loaded in new filament and noticed that the head moved. But I, I touched the head and was like, huh, there's no, there's no, um, the motors are not locked in place. So I figured it's probably going to home its X and Y to regain its origin because they didn't have it set like that. It did not. It just continued and was shifted over like 10 millimeters. So um, it's just, yeah, it, it's a really... I would rather not have the filament runout sensor than have it give you a false sense of security like this. So granted, again, this is something that they can fix with a firmware update, and I'm sure that they will. That doesn't change the fact that like it's not there now. And as far as I've been told, it's a retail unit. There's nothing beta about my unit. So um, it's just things like that that to me hold off a couple of weeks on releasing your printer and do the thing right. That That's really it. So. Uh, homing would likely fix that little software. Up yeah, no, no. Homing would totally fix it. If they just homed the X and the Y to re retain or, you know, to regain its zero, zero for X and Y, it would totally fix it. It doesn't. But I, I agree completely. Um, um, I, I agree completely that it's a simple update that they can do with firmware and they likely will. I'm just saying that, like, I don't review beta units other than very, very rare occasions. And the reason why is because I don't think it shows a good representation of what the final product is going to be. Granted, we've seen plenty of times that Corality has changed their products over, like going from a meanwhile to a generic after the reviews have come out. I mean, I'm not saying instantly, like, right, a bait and switch, but they, they've done it, whether it's a year later or not. So you always need to take reviews as a data point and not as, as like, as full truth, because even if I do my best to share my experience, things could change beyond my control that I'm not even aware of. But the the thing is like, I this was not a beta unit is what I'm getting at. So although they might have in, in, intended on releasing it with that corrected, it, it, I it's not there now. And so I'm sharing it as this is the retail unit. So yeah, so many things to be fixed with better software. I bet AI powered printer could make a hot glue gun print nice, yeah. So it's just frustrating. It's just really frustrating. And then also, I, I I don't know why I expected that they would change it, but I mentioned in last rant thing, I promise. Um, but in the first review I did, one of my biggest issues, well, there was two things. One was small. Um, the the uh, grid that's on the printed build, build surface, it doesn't stay on there. It comes off on your parts, which isn't a huge deal. It's just annoying. And I, I basically said like, Maybe they should just not do this or or go with a different solution so that way you're not peeling paint into your parts. They didn't change that. I, I got parts over here with the grid in it. But the, the other thing was that the, the Z-axis has two motors and it can totally tram itself, but they instead cheaped out one with a board that has only four drivers. So they're, they're driven uh, together. And the way that it trams itself is it goes to the top and rams the top and is supposed to correct its alignment. Well, they, it doesn't work. It, it definitely doesn't work or doesn't work well. And it, if there's anything more than a hairline of correction needed, it just won't correct it. So I experienced the exact same thing on this because they went with the same board. It's four drivers. 
it goes to the top the it, it just goes to the top like kisses the top of the printer for a few seconds doesn't really do anything and then comes back down so I, I mean for a lot of people the things that i'm going to say that i don't like about it won't be enough to deter, deter them because it's 330 dollars and it's still got a lot of positives um but man there are just like I think most people would gladly have paid an extra $30 and would have been fine waiting an extra 30 days to have the firmware dialed in and to have a uh, Z-axis that can actually tram itself, you know? So, yeah. I don't get the purpose. Yeah, I don't get the purpose of the grid either. Yep, but maybe more people are transitioning to 2.3 kilogram spools, which printer? Uh, the SV06 Plus. And my inner came with a flat bed, wow. Uh, the unified firmware solves the soft tramming issue. Oh, nice. From TH3D. Yeah, I mean, again, these things can be fixed. Like someone mentioned in my review that, because uh, I, I basically, I used cans of soup and people were like, wow, that's great. Or just use one, two, three blocks, which I don't have, which I should have. But um, people were also saying that like all that they need is to change it. So that way it's got a quicker speed when it goes up and, and hits, the, hits the top, which absolutely. But again, it's another, it's another, I think that you should buy a product based off of you being okay with it in its current state without nothing else ever happening to it because it's just it's just he said she said like promises until they're fulfilled right there's been a lot of companies that said oh we're gonna do this and that and then they don't fulfill <clears throat> um so yeah again i know the community community i have no doubt will fix the the filament runout sensor they'll fix the if you're saying they've already done it on the v06 they'll do the exact same thing for these 06 plus i'm just saying from the factory like we're giving them passes which sucks like it, it just sucks i wish they would just do it correctly so can't blame them shoppers don't know these little differences but notice pennies yeah yeah for sure uh i love the cans of soup yeah a lot of people did i i just i mean right so I don't have a machinist background in like that. So ev most everybody I think has cans of soup or cans, some sort of can, and they're close enough that they can get your Z at least level enough to make it where the mesh can take care of the rest. So yeah, a lot of people commented on the cans of soup and we're pretty pumped on that. So I was happy, <laughs> happy about that. Anyways, let's, let's continue. <clears throat> tired, tired Daniel rants a lot. Okay, so end stops. Let's see. Uh, so we've got X, Y, Z, and probe, which should be the same thing. So uh, I'm going to hold the... <clears throat> okay, so holding the X switch. Okay, that shows triggered. That's working as it should be. Uh, y switch is off to the side down here. Okay, Y is good. Um, so now when it comes to the clicky, I think that I have the pin set correctly. Um, let's see here. Uh, it doesn't look right. Nope. One second. There we go. Okay. So. All right. So that shows nothing, which I think is how it's supposed to show it. But what happens if I... One second here it's hard to trigger that um let me see if i just grab like this there we go let's see huh so clicky is not showing triggered okay so we need to figure out that that's that's definitely clicky is clicky is the main thing i think we need to do right now um let's also verify let's see if we go side <clears throat> Uh, I have an issue with companies relying on community to fix their stuff. And yes, uh, you're spot on calling it out. Yeah, I, so I have no problem with like, I don't have problems with the community making things better. And I think it's awesome. And I, and I love that. But I, I, there's a difference between the community providing like extra enhanced features and the community providing basic functionality that should be there from the beginning. You know, that's, I think that's my line. <laughs> just ordered my SV06 and two cans of soup. That's amazing. Thank you, zombie. Thank you for the banana, zombie. The dollar forty-nine and the lap. It's getting worse because the community fixes them and companies are using that. Agreed. We shouldn't accept things that might burn down our house. Also, definitely agreed. Uh, you sent a total of seven thousand seven hundred forty-eight messages on the server. Wow. 
damn, that's awesome. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's make sure that the X and Y are homing as they should. I think I checked this last night and they should be, let's see. It took me longer than I'd like to admit to figure out why it wasn't homing correctly. And I realized that it was set, um, the default was set to Cartesian. And so that would explain why the motion was not working the way I thought. I was like, I've tried every, I've inverted the steppers in all of the combinations uh, and it's still not working. And then I was like, oh, it's something silly. Okay, so that makes me happy. X and Y are operating as they should, and stops and motors. So, uh, extruder, I'm not sure about yet. I guess we could try that, actually. Let's, um, let's do that. So let's turn off the motor. And then once the extruder's verified, that basically confirms everything other than our Z, which the high drive will definitely need to do some work with, uh, and then the clicky. So let's see, let's warm this up to, let's do like 210 on the hot end. Uh, as a new buyer, I went for price, didn't see why the Viper was more expensive than an SV06. I wanted the SV06, but found a Viper cheaper locally is the only reason why I bought it. Yeah, I mean, you're not, most people are like that as well. Um, I, I mean, the, there's a reason why the ANET A8 was so popular. I bought the ANET A8. I, that was, the ANET A8 was, well, I had quite a few printers before that, uh, but it was probably like my sixth, sixth or seventh printer and I bought it for the same reason. I was like, whoa, this is a pretty good sized build volume compared to a lot of the other budget printers. It had a screen, which uh, I don't remember. A lot of them did come with the RepRap style screen back then, um, but not all. And a heated bed, which back then, uh, like I would say half the printers I initially got didn't have a heated bed. Um, and so I was really excited for it. And me being a new about, I didn't really think, well, seven printers and I wasn't, a super like I wasn't fresh to 3d printing but I wasn't aware of just how uh non-rigid the acrylic would make the frame it was still fine like if you if you got it all calibrated and set it in place it was fine and it was really fun to learn on uh but yeah a lot of people bought into that printer because of the price you see the price you're like whoa big build volume it's got a screen a heated bed well check 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 but the specs the specs will definitely tell you part of the story, but it's just that, it's just part of the story. There's so much more, you know, than just that. Hey, what's up, Ted? Uh, as a producer, uh, it must be frustrating. Adding features are worth it, uh, worth it, but put your printer dollars more in the competition and no one buys. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's really, I, being, being a 3D printer manufacturer has to be tough. And that's the reason why we've seen so many companies come and go over the years. Uh, the heated bed works so well on the A8, it heated your house. <laughs> oh God. Uh, uh, gotta go back to take care everyone. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Steve. I'm excited to see your, uh, your workbench for your CNC, man. My, my friend had one rip electronics out immediately. I didn't rip electronics out immediately, but once I saw that there were issues Lila, you opening my door? Um, once I saw that there were issues, I did uh, use a separate MOSFET board for the bed. I won't leave it like that. Okay, so let's see. Uh, and then I also, I don't think it had uh, thermal runaway, so I went with the, what was the firmware called? Sky, Skynet firmware? I made a video on it, but it's been a really long time. Um, in a uh, Skynet firmware. Yeah, it was called Skynet firmware. So it was five years ago that I made this video. Before I get into wow, three minute video, really short. Yeah, so March 24th of 2017 is when I upgraded it. Um, uh, when did I first get it? So that was one year later. Okay, so this is when I was assembling it. So I assembled the ANA A8 in February 17th of 2017. So I got my first 3D printer at the end of 2014. So let's just say, so it's roughly two years in. Although the first six months of my 3D printing journey, I didn't really do any 3D printing because the DaVinci 1.1 uh, broke, uh, well broke, you know, in quotation marks. Um, and it was, it was decommissioned for like six months. Uh, how was I not aware of the second channel? <laughs> It's the sneaky channel. I, 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 um, I promoted it like once or twice and now I sort of only mention it when 
it fits into the regular content. If I'm like, hey, we did an unboxing of this on the Monobot Army channel, but I just, I probably should do a better job of promoting it. I, as someone that creates content online, I'm probably failing on that a little bit. So let's see. Um, okay, so things we need to do really quickly here before anything else is to transfer over uh, 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 extruder. So this is our current one, machine, printer.csg, extruder. Okay. So, micro step 16, rotation distance. I'm just gonna copy all this over. There's no need to, this is rotation distance. Yep, that is a different value. Uh, filament diameter should be fine. Nozzle diameter should be fine. Sensor type, 3950. Sensor type. Nozzle, uh, I think that's it. I think that's all that we probably need. Um, let me save and restart it. All right. I probably could have just copied over those PID settings as well, but I'm gonna re redo it when everything's done here. Okay, so let's see now if we extrude, if it goes forwards or backwards. My first printer was a JG Aurora A5S. Oh, nice. I had the JG Aurora A5. Um, I actually didn't mind that printer um, it was one of the first printers I think that I got that had the, um, oh gosh, um, what was the build, what's the build surface called? Um, Creality has totally taken it, but it was any, Ultra Base. It has the Ultra Base style build surface. Uh, stepper Buzzer is your friend. Oh, I, I should do Stepper Buzzer. I always just, um, on the extruder at least, I always just send it, but I, you're right. <laughs> um, let me see here. Okay, so these are our extrusion feed rates. Filament length, let's just go slightly in. Okay, I don't think that's doing anything. No, that is not doing anything okay so extruder should be <laughs> oh let's see stepper buzzer allows you to check your let me see here it allows you to check your motors without like fully moving them in a direction uh clippers i've done it before i think on the first v0 i went through the instructions <clears throat> and it recommends that you do that so let's see here Mm -mm, verify heaters, verify stepper motor annual pin, uh, verify end stops, verify, here we go. So use the stepper buzz command to verify the connectivity of each stepper motor. Start by manually positioning the given access to a midway point and run stepper, bu or stepper buzz and then the specific stepper. The command will cause the given stepper to move one millimeter in a positive direction and then it will return to its starting position. So it basically just does a move command, a very short move command versus it, Otherwise you have to try to home it. And when you home it, depending on your settings, that can go terribly wrong. <clears throat> uh, you have a dual spool holder, GP I think, uh, I, I, I'm going to be changing the spool holder. I've talked about it a couple times, but it's too much weight, in my opinion, on the top of the printer. Uh, I'm going to just do a single spool holder and I'm gonna drop it lower down. I don't know exactly what's set up yet. Someone mentioned something like the Trident spool holder off to the side would work fine. That's probably what I'll do. Hey Steven. Uh, what what in the tool head is that? Didn't realize it was that modded. Oh, this tool head? This this is the EVA 2.4, the Mercury 1.1 version. It, it's substantially different than the uh, than the uh, regular 2.4. Yeah. So I let's check here. Um, something tells me that potentially I have the pins set incorrectly. So. Um, Mercury mm -mm -mm. 1.1, enter.cfg. Okay, so extruder, that looks fine. Extruder, that looks fine. <clears throat> Let me go to, here we go, pin out. Okay. 
Oops, I think I passed it. It should be way up here. Okay, so this is really tough to see. Um, why did I wish? Let's see here. There we go. Okay. So it should be motor. Let's see. So I, I, I labeled them, or I did it X, Y, Z, Z, Z. So this should be extruder. So enable is PA15. I'm going to move this off to the side so that way I can look at it without having to constantly do that. Uh, let me see here. There we go. Okay, uh, so I said PA15, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Enable pin is PA15. That looks right. Step pin is PA10, that looks right. And direction is not PD15. Direction is PA14. So uh, PA14. So that was probably our issue. Let's try this again. <clears throat> uh, isn't Revo a ATC Semitech? Um, that's a great question. I wonder why I would have been running something differently then. E3D Revo Remister Pipe. First off, we're going to enter Pipe Plus, so the Sensei Pipe, absolutely love the Revo. However, I just realized I'm a printer compared to the rest of just said as. Uh, the Revo uses the, so the correct type is, yeah, it looks like it is incorrect. Good catch. Sensor tight, extruder. Thank you, Delmar. I'm putting the parts for the 180 rook. Nice. Oh, I'm a goofball. I've wrong config. Okay. All right, let's try it again. I wonder where I grabbed that initial value from, or if I just didn't ever change it and I saw that it was working correctly and completely forgot. Okay, so let's see now if we go side. Will this extrude? Still doesn't look like it's extruding, why? Why are we not extruding? Definitely not extruding still. Hmm. Uh, your pen should be right. It's M6, so. Three, fourteen, three, ten, three, fifteen. <clears throat> hey, Carl. Uh, zombie, catch you later. Good luck. Thank you very much. I think I'm gonna need it. Today, <clears throat> today's probably gonna be a lot of troubleshooting. I don't know why. Oh my god. 
<laughs> wait, 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 wait. X, Y, Z. No, 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 no. We, we have it set correctly. Let me see here. X, Y, Z, 1, Z, 2, Z, 3. Super strange. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I have it in, let's see. I have it in these uh, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I got X, Y, Z, Z1, Z2. And then I've got extruder right here. So it should be, it should be these values which is correct. Um, I could just swap over, I could swap the stepper motor to a different port and try a different driver just to eliminate that really quickly. Um, connection 10 is PA10, let me just double check. Oh. No, that's right. Direction pin, PA14. Step pin. PA... Uh, enable PA15. Wait, wait, as a heads up, ports are B, A, skip. Oh, interesting. Okay, let me move, let's move some things around then. Let's, um. <clears throat> All right, let's kill. Kill the power. Hey, what's up, Mazo? Uh, day's been going pretty good. Honestly, I slept in really late. Uh, I was up till two playing around with this. Um, so I was very, very tired this morning, but I feel pretty good. I uh, had a nice breakfast. Probably grab a coffee in a second here. Okay, so Delmar is saying, as a heads up, Ports are BA, so we're fine with that. And skip the third port. So BA, skip. These cables are stuck. All right. Okay, let me read that one more time. Port B, skip Z0, then Z1, then Z2. The extruder on the end. Third and fourth port are the same stepper on the board. Interesting. Okay. Let's try this. So, so those go together. You can go here. I wonder if that's the issue then. Um, yeah, that very well might be the issue. I've got the wrong, I would have marked it wrong then, or I would have said it incorrectly. Okay, so we need this guy up here. the next shooter on the end all right we'll move extruder all the way down to the last one then so yeah i had no idea that probably screws up then the pins um i would definitely screw up the pins
Okay. Delmar, you get two gold stickers today. <laughs> it's the second save. <laughs> second save in just a little bit here. Okay, let's plug things back in. Change up that. So our X and Y are fine, our A and B, I guess. Uh, there's a new Meltdown podcast. Oh, nice. I'll check it out. My two favorite hobbies coming together. I'm going to print the Prusa caster over the next. Nice. Uh, the clear top of the SSR makes the printer go faster, right? Yes. Yes, that is what I heard. And I'm sticking with it. Uh, does anyone here have any experience with the Flaxinus Core XY3 printer? Happy to hook you up with some info as I'm a dev on the Flaxinus project. Uh, first time I've ever heard of it. Uh, it's the first time I've ever heard of it. If you have some more info you want to share on it, um, I would say post it over in the Modbot Army Discord and tag me if you'd like. Uh, learning from my mistakes. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Trailblazing. It's usually what I try to do with all of my long builds is point out the pain points, like the things I got stuck on, because there's always, if you get stuck on something, there's always going to be others that also get stuck on that exact same thing. All right. Uh, it's a Core XY mod for the Cape. What? How does that even, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd love to see, I'd love to see more on that. Okay. So based off of that, we need to change a couple of things. Um, so that should have made PC seven. Yeah. So this is going to be our extruder. Bam. We'll comment out this guy. And then we need to, let's see. Okay. So step pin for the final one is PD eight. I didn't, it's funny, um, granted, I looked at a lot of stuff last night, but I don't remember seeing anywhere that stood out to me um, that two of the motor were tied to one of the steppers. Uh, I didn't see anything that was like really apparent when I was looking through it. Okay, enable PC7. And then direction is PC6. All right, let's try this again. Third time is a charm. Uh, Tiny Core XY. I do have a KP3S sitting in the garage. Wait, what did I do now? Option UART pin and section must be specified. What? What did I do? Oh. I need, yeah, meter. <sighs> Try it again. I do have a KP3S that's sitting in the garage that is still stock other than it has clipper on it. I'm in the process of building mine. Uh, I think the Octopus is the same way on the three fourths port on the third stepper. I mean, I guess it makes sense because I mean, depending on how you're running it. Um, I mean, for example, like the, the X1 printers, well, no, they only use a single motor but they're all tied together with the, with the belt. So yeah, I guess it makes sense if you, what? Why are we still getting errors? Option you aren't pin in section must be specified. Okay, something tells me that I commented out the correct thing now, but I didn't uncomment all the other things. Yes. All right. Will we get an error this time? I don't think so. Pin PC seventies multiple times in the config. Okay. What is using PC seven? So the extruder is using PC seven. Wouldn't that be? So 
So the UART pin and the extruder pin are showing the same, but isn't that... So for X, we've got PC10. Interesting. So why is... I uh, really enjoyed the Clack Pro video. I'm glad that you got that working. Yeah, the Clack Ender has been absolutely awesome. Hey, what's going on, Worst? Weird to me. Look in the pinout file. Is there, is there a file for the pinout except other than the screen grab that I'm using? Um, where's the GitHub? There we go. Is there something other than this? Uh, just a sec, I'll send you my config from my Manta M8 Hydra. Okay, sweet. Um, Luke sent me his, but there's definitely some changes. Um, pin out. So it's the same thing. Size, size, V1.1. Oh, that's a good point. It might be an issue with the board. Um, I imagine, I imagine mine is a 1.0. That is a really good point. Okay. Um, let's check that really quick. Since mine was a early, um, there we go. Pin out 1.1, PNG, pin out 1.0. Okay, so the issue we're running into is with the extruder pin, which is over here. So this says PC7, and this is a 1.1, and this is a 1.0. Ah! Boom! Okay. PD8, PD. PD8, PD10, PD9, PD8. So they did change things up. So that has to be the reason why. Interesting, okay. So this is 1.1 again. Let's get rid of this. I'm not referencing that. That's not confusing at all. Okay, so it should be PD10 is our step. Direction pin is PD8. Yeah, that'll do it. And then enable pin is PD9. Fun stuff, all right. <laughs> Uh, Discord GM. Okay, I'll check it right a second. Uh, I was printing the Marlin pin out for that board. It may have been your... Oh, okay, gotcha. That's the same board. I have the original. Do you have two or three pin fan headers? Okay, let's see if this does it. Once we get to the Hydra, uh, Scott, I'll grab your config and take a look at it. I've got most of the stuff working. Like, AB motors are fine. Fans are fine. End stops are working except for Z, which I need to check the pinout because that could be my issue with that as well. Is that maybe I've been looking at, um, maybe I'm looking at it and it's just the wrong, they change things. Uh, there is a giveaway. Uh, giveaway will open up in 21 minutes. Nappin and Del Mar both get stickers, <laughs> golden stickers. <clears throat> Thank you for your help. It would have taken me, it would have taken me a while. I um, I feel like I should have realized that with an early board, there probably was a revision or could have been a revision by now, but it did not cross my mind. Uh, hey, what's up, Bigfoot? Hey, hope everyone is having a great day. How's the build going? Build's going good. We're, I mean, we're basically on the firmware portion of it now. Um, 
let's see if this did it. So let's go just a short extrusion. Uh, oh no, we'll go there. Extrusion length, short. Oh, oh, it's moving. Check it. All right, <laughs> we did it. You can see it. All right, and then let's make sure we can retract. The fun thing, the, f the thing that's funny, right, about not just 3D printing, I guess, but like any project is you get stuck on something and it seems like you can like really hit your head against the wall for a while trying to figure out what's going on. And like nine out of 10 times, if not even more than that, the solution is something so simple. Like, hey, your pin's wrong because you're looking at the wrong version and they've changed the pin out. So thank you, Nappin. <laughs> Uh, the v, the 1.0 has a three pin, uh, has three four pin pan ports, and the V.1 only has two pin, but more two pin pan headers and support can. Oh, interesting. Does the 1.0 not support can then, or I can use? It's fine as long as I have the U2C board. Yeah, so mine has the three the three four pin headers. Okay, so we're good on the extruder now. Uh, which again, now I want to check the. So I've got, let's see. I'm just curious to see if for the clicky, um, if that was my issue. So let's go under printer.cfg. We've got virtual. Let's see here, one second. Okay, so this is... I know that I switched up, so one of the, all right, so step pin, PE2. PE2. No, and stop pin, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, PC0. Okay, so I believe if this is stepper pin, nope, direct, uh, and stop pin, PF4. Uh, okay, so I have my clicky probe in PF3 according to 1.1. And if I go to 1.0, it's still PF3. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I just, because I, I normally I would do like X, Y, Z end stop, but I was having issues with this port, um, which makes me think it's probably again that I, no, it's not, pin's the same. I don't know what the issue is with that. So I've got Z, Y, and then skip a port um, X. So PF3. Hey BBs. Uh, you need a UTC board. Okay, sick. So I do have one, which I'm good then. Hey, Chris. Uh, hi, John. You must miss Bruce Alive. I asked whether they would attend BARF, and they said they will come when it's confirmed that it's happening. <laughs> nice. I did that too with a recent Neopixel project. I soldered the strip up backwards, didn't pay attention to the arrows on the strip. The power won't blow backwards. <laughs> okay. So now I just need to figure out... The next thing is clicky which is why it is not registering. I can't remember if you go with, if you go with probe Z virtual end stop, does it ignore this? And you needed to find the probe pin elsewhere or does this still get used? No, not stepper pin, I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 okay, ignore what I just said. End stop pin, so it is probably, okay. So I need to define, let's see, uh, pro, uh, uh, board pins, pro, here we go. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. No, no, it's right there, okay. PF5. Oh, I think that's my issue. I think this is supposed to be PF3. Let's try it. <clears throat> Okay, it shows open now, which is good. It didn't show open before, so we've done a thing. 
And then let's see if we probe. Oops, let's trigger it. There we go. Sweet. Awesome, it's super simple. Just the pin, I did the wrong pin. Again, the, the issue is, well, there's a lot of issues, but I was doing a lot of the firmware stuff. Like it was the last thing I was doing before going to bed and I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, okay, so we've got that. Now the other issue I've got um, quickly here is to set, uh, let's see, printer.cfg. I need to change the locations of the, wait, what is this? We're making good progress though. We've got everything functioning now. Uh, I just need to verify that Clicky's working and then we can move it to the shorter dock and then move on to Hydra. Okay, this is not loading. Why is this not loading? I just wanna, I wanna quickly grab the end stop position values that I set in the previous config because all that stuff should still be fine at least for right this second to make sure that the clicky stuff's still working. Uh, did you get a heat block for the CB1? My board got crazy hot without it. Yeah, yeah, yep, it has the heat sink. Um, I, uh, Luke, uh, who's running the CB1 and the Manta MAP and his as well, uh, said that I should definitely get some fans down there in the electronics section still to help. Um, I'm running, I'm currently running this setup on the Manta E3 EZ board without a fan. Uh, it does have a heat sink though, and it's been doing okay, but yeah, I'm going to add at least one fan down below to blow air across the heat sink as well. They definitely do get warm. Okay, so my printer. Position and stop, 280, 280. Position max, 280. And then for Y, we've got uh, end stop is at 230 and 230. Those are not going to be right, but we're going to, I just want to put everything back really quickly again, just to make sure that Clicky is working with those values still. Position max 230, and then position min. This definitely won't be right because we have a bigger bed. It's not going to be in the center of the bed with these values, but just trying to make sure I didn't break anything. Okay, I think with that, um, I think with that we're gonna, let's try to home everything. Um, no, let's not try to home everything. Um, let's see if we can dock. Okay, so let's go home X. That's not right. What did we do? What did we do? <laughs> I didn't think we changed anything with the... Uh... I didn't think we changed anything with our X and our X was working just a second ago. Weird. Okay, let's try inverting it. Level the bed, yes. Okay, well, I'm gonna invert, invert it and see if that fixes it. I don't think it will. I think I'll have to try it a couple times. Nope, that won't fix it. It's just weird to me. It was, we had it set in the correct directions. I don't understand what changed.
You didn't touch those wires, run stuff or buzzed ever, but okay. All right, I'll do that. Direction pin. Yeah, I'm confused as to what changed. I didn't think we touched anything. Okay, uh, stepper buzz, stepper buzz, stepper buzz. Motor is moving back and forth, but it looks like it's moving diagonally. This isn't right. Here we go. Okay, temperatures were fine on, heaters were fine on. Motor check. Verify each motor is operating correctly and send the following command to the terminal. Run the command for each of the motors. It looks like it's running fine though. So I feel like it's probably this that needs to be changed. Yeah. Oh, inverted end stop. Let's scroll down for the guide. Yeah, it only uses one stepper, but it should pull to right, not left. Looks reversed, okay. So let's see what happens right now if I go because Y was working correctly too. So let's see what happens if I just go Y. So they're both going, they both inverted. They both inverted now. Y, is, y went the wrong direction as well. So based off of that, uh, inverted, inverted. Yeah, so we need, to, we need to change both values then. This is what's happening. Uh, there we go. Oh, no, no. I think you asked about what does it do if you just home X? Same if you home Y. It, do, it does the, uh, it, they're going in opposite directions, turtle, both of them. So they should, I think if I invert both of them based off what I'm saying, it should fix it. I just don't entirely know what I just changed that made it invert because it was working fine before. Uh, but yeah, Nuno, regarding the, regarding the, um, CB1 Wi-Fi, they definitely fixed the issue they were having initially. Um, it's still temperamental when it comes to the antenna placement. Uh, on my other printer, when I had the antenna underneath the printer, I couldn't get connection at all. So um, you, it is just an like um, ESP32 based antenna connector. So you can always get a beefier antenna if you want to, but it's been working fine on this because this is there's not metal on top of it. I think that the sheet metal on, on top of the antenna on the Ender 3 is what was causing the issues. Uh, I didn't touch, I changed the steppers on the board only for Z, the three Z motors and the extruder. I didn't touch the, um, uh, I did not touch the XY or the AB. I specifically didn't touch them because they were working correctly. <laughs> Alrighty, let's let's see if this fixes it. That looks right. That looks right. Yeah, weird. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. Well, I should probably take you off. Let's put this back in the dock for right a second. See if we can get this to grab the probe.
Okay, so we might not be able... Is there any way we can test out Clicky before we do Hydra or no? Because the Z is going to want to move as part of the... Uh, as part of it. Uh, the spool holder is from the Zero G. It should be if you go into the GitHub um, under mods, but it's also in the Discord under modifications, under official modifications. I'm wondering if we might need to do Hydra first then. The Z motor is definitely not correct, especially because we just changed the pinout on it. So um, we can do Hydra if that's what we need to do next. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You're saying do all of them. Okay. All right. We'll do that. We will do that, Delmar. Um, let's see. First, I'm going to go through and confirm the pins, though. I don't think the pins are correct, especially because um, of the wrong... I was using the wrong pin out. Let's put this in the center. Okay. So, let's take a look at this. I'm put on some... On something else. Okay. So, based off what you said, we've got X. No, my my pins might be correct. No, because I didn't move. I still have the first five slots have steppers in them, and all I moved was the plug further down. But because the I think you said that the third motor plug is tied to the fourth. Um, it shouldn't have affected the pinout. So well, let me just confirm that I didn't, let's see. So we've got 1.0. So Z1 is going to be right here. It should be direction PD6, PD7, and PF10. Uh, PD6, PD7, PF10, that looks fine. And then we've got Z1, which is the following one, which should be PD2, PD3, PD5. PD2, PD3, PD5, that looks fine. And then we've got PC8, PD1, PC9. PD... Oh, that's not right. Okay, so the fifth one's different. So direction on the fifth one should be PC8. Direction's PC8. Step pin is PC9. No, that is right. And then enable PD1. No, that is right. Okay, that looks fine. Okay, so let's try that. Stepper buzz. Let me see as far as... Okay, so the first stepper is going to be front left is how I have it wired. So let's try this. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it moving or not. All right. Did not seem right. <laughs> that did not seem right. That was a rough turn. All right, what's the error that it threw? Uh, Stepper Z reports error. Low short, uh, low side short A. All right. Z. 
Micro steps 13. Position min, position max. Position end stop. I'm gonna take a look. Um, I'm gonna take a look at your your build or your config, Scott, for comparison. Um, let me see here. Check a loader wire, I kill the stepper driver with a low side short, keep a simple diode, on the floor pin connector, and spin the motor. Okay, let me see. Okay, so left front, which is the same setup as me, you've got PD3, PD2, PD5, micro step, 16, rotation distance, 8. I don't have a full steps per rotation here. Remember, plus is down when it's set up. I'm not seeing anything. Wait, 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 wait. Stepper bow should be down and then up. So I have it set where PD7. Okay, so you have your extruder with my nice D7, D6, D10, 16, rotation distance, 8, micro step 16. Weird. Uh, let me try a different motor just to see if there's any difference in, or if it's if there's an error as well. Let's see. Okay, so that Hey, Andrew, thank you very much for the $10 donation uh, for the diapers and formula fund. Yes, uh, we've got a huge box of diapers and wipes, uh, but <laughs> based off of what the internet is telling me, uh, how often a baby uses the restroom, I don't think, I don't think it'll last very long. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. We actually did, we did grab some formula um, uh, yesterday or the day before, because we're not sure how feeding's gonna go and all that stuff. Thank you very much. Okay, so this one's working. So Z1 is working. Um, let's try it one more time so you guys can see it. Z1, and uh, Delmar says, so stepper buzz would be down and then up. I can't tell if it went down and then up first, but it's down, wait. Yeah, that's right. Down and then up. Yeah, so that's working. Babies use the restroom? They do. <laughs> okay, so back is fine. Um, let's check right side. I buy five boxes of Pampers at a time. <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, it was on our registry. So we got a box that came with a bunch of smaller boxes. So. It's definitely more than, more than one. Okay, that's working. So we have one, 
One that's being a jerk and the rest are fine. Yeah, that seems fine. <clears throat> yeah, instead of boxes of filament, I'm gonna have to switch over to <laughs> boxes of boxes of pampers. Okay, so let me let me visually inspect things. Um, red, black, blue, green. Okay, that should all be fine. Oh, oh. I found the issue. I found the issue. It's hardware. Well, I'm gonna shut this down really quick. Uh, when I unplug, so the plugs for these JST connectors attach like glue. Uh, I don't really know why, which is fine if you're not moving around. Um, when I, one second, turn this off. <clears throat> so when, um, when we moved down the stepper motor wires, one of the pins came out. I still having a box, man. If you were local, I would take your take your pampers. <laughs> yeah, two of two of the wires popped out. Okay, so maybe late night crimping didn't go so well. All right, so I'm going to. I'm gonna unplug this and just really quickly crimp this wire. Well, that's why I'm glad. Man, why the hell is it stuck so hard? Wow. Um, that's why I'm glad we checked the other pin. Oh, you know what? Let's open the giveaway too. That's why I'm glad we checked the other pins because if the if the other motors also weren't working correctly, then I'd be like, okay, it's probably not me and my my wiring. Uh, it's probably something with firmware that's set incorrectly, but since the other two worked, it made me believe that it probably wasn't uh, the firmware because it's, you know, everything else is behaving as it should. Okay, uh, giveaway form is pinned in the chat. There will be, I'm eight minutes late, so we'll say roughly 30 minutes to fill that out. And then uh, we'll do we'll do a drawing. I'm just gonna cut all the pins and start over. I don't, if two of them popped out, I don't really trust that I did. Did a great job with these. Also, I think that after today, um, I'll probably do use the stepper buzz moving forward. I, I've kind of just always been like, all right, well, I'll have my finger on the um, kill switch if needed, but stepper buzz is a much smarter and much safer way of making sure your steppers are fine before you full send it. Uh, dude, we've been out of diaper, out of the diaper business a long time. My mini me is a teenager. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Yeah, I watched videos on, uh, I watched video. The man, my, my, the YouTube algorithm has to be super confused with my search history. It's like, okay, this guy went from like electronics and 3D printing and like, occasional comedy stuff to diaper stuff. So many things that I don't know. So, so many things. Like I was, <laughs> I was watching videos on how to help the baby with gas and I'm like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> Got my stuff all nicely organized. Grab a new connector, four pin, got a boom. Uh, the weight on the diaper is the child's weight, not the diaper's weight, the weight on the diaper. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, can you write G code to print a random object? Yes, I, I cannot write G code to print a random object. I do not know G code that well, but yeah. Um, a lot of, People that have been CNCing for a while either do or have done a lot of manual cam work um, before all the automation stuff. So some of them I think still do certain operations manually, but yeah, I, I don't. I, oops, I dropped a pin on the ground. It's the circle of life searches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right.
really sad. These uh, these engineer crimpers. Um, I was crimping. I think it was when I was doing the switch wire, and one of the one of the pins um, sort of got wedged incorrectly, and ended up damaging the teeth on one of the connector sizes on 1.6. So now it's hit or miss when I go to crimp around the sleeving, that one worked, whether it actually does it correctly or whether it breaks off a leg. So I, um, I probably need to get a different pair. Someone told me, I think that the IWIS, these 3220Ms, um, which I've been only used so far with Microfit, uh, will work with DuPonts, but I haven't tried them yet. Uh, wait till the maternity ward nurse teaches you how to swaddle a baby. I can barely fold a napkin. They want me to, to fold the baby in a swaddle, end up just rolling the baby in a towel. You should see, um, man, I, uh, that's funny. I, I've made burritos in the past here and my tortilla wrapping game is so weak. It, it is, it is so bad. Um, I will say like we were gifted some act, like some swaddles and I think that they simplify it where I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's Velcro that they use or what the material is that allows them to stick together. But um, I think it's like a cheat, oh shit, I didn't do it right. Uh, I think it's like a cheat code for swaddling where you basically just pull it tight and it sticks. You don't have to do anything crazy. Aaron, Aaron did get, um, it's like a, uh, gosh, it's like a baby carrier, but it's one like insanely long stretchy, uh, stretchy thing. And that has has a like 15 steps in terms of how to wrap it around you and then wrap it around your baby and like I did it once I tried it like you know with a no pressure environment and it took a while and I'm like how the hell am I gonna wrap a baby in this um, that doesn't probably want to be wrapped and when I can't even wrap it without the baby so yeah there will be lots of uh, lots of swaddle swaddle videos searching I'm sure baby sleeper bags I don't know what that is yeah that did not it's probably the reason why they're pulling out easier is because it's not able to crimp the sleeving as well as it should be so bummer uh, I wish uh, 3220 M's work well for both okay sweet I might need to try it then I just got so used to using the engineer and I, I like I like these like so don't I don't like them. I don't like them enough that I want to spend the like 40 or so dollars on getting another pair right now. I think I'd rather try the, um, I think I'd rather try the Iwis. All right, one more pin, and then we should be good to install this, power it back on, hopefully see that works, and then we can, um, and then we can maybe try the click probe again. Oh, come on. Sometimes I get in a really good groove with, um, with crimping and other times I feel like it's a, just an uphill battle. Uh, let's see. I still wish I followed through on my million dollar idea. The car ride simulator crib. That's, that's rad. <laughs> original engineers are worth their weight in gold. I've also bought the original, original engineers. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that there were um, engineers made in two locations. I think that this isn't going in. Um, I think that the good ones are, is it out of Japan or something like that? I'm pretty sure mine are not the original ones. So I had a conversation with Steve on that a while back and I think he was sent some of the original ones and he said that the, the quality of them is just substantially better. I had no idea prior to that conversation that, um, that there was even two locations that they were made. Oh, this did not work well. Come on. Yeah, I think that these are... These are kind of tore up at this point.
All right, hopefully that's good. So direction wise, we want red on the far right. Red, and we just do them in order blue. Green. Why are we not going in green? There we go. And black. Okay. All right. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Let's see. We go in. It's weird. Normally it makes a pretty satisfying popping feel, and that did not. So. All right. Well, it's in. Okay, try this again. Power on. Whew. Uh, crimp my last wiring harness with regular pliers and it's working great. That sounds awful. <laughs> it sounds absolutely awful. Last night, uh, what kind of calipers do you use? Calipers? Um, for calipers, I just use these. They're fairly inexpensive Amazon calipers. Um, I have two pairs of them. The first pair worked really well. Nyko. Nyko calipers. Um, I think they're fairly inexpensive. I'm sure there's better quality ones, but man, for the stuff that I've been doing, they've worked out great. I've had one of them for some years and then the batteries died. And when I went to order new batteries, I just bought a second set as well to have. So I've got one in here and one in the garage. Um, hey, what's up, G-Funny? How's the wiring going? Hey, uh, wiring, man. Um, so good and bad, right? <laughs> so I did a lot of the wiring last night. I let out the magic smoke uh, and one, on one of the fan controllers. Um, I did a terrible job of making it obvious what was what coming from the tool head down. And I, what I thought was very apparent, a um, layer cooling fan and what was very apparently a limit switch was not the case. Thankfully, it just damaged that fan port. Uh, and since there's seven on here, I'm fine. I swapped it over. Uh, but that was the first hurdle. Second hurdle was that I have version 1.0. I've been using version 1.1's pinout. So that a lot of it does carry over, but there's a few things that don't. And that was confusing. Uh, thank you, whoever, uh, I think it was, um, oh, it was, I think it was Nappin that called that out. Um, and that's primarily been the main issues. Right now we discovered a pin had popped out when I was moving things over. Oh, also um, Delmar told me, I didn't realize that the third motor port is tied together with the fourth, I believe is what he said. Um, so that was news to me. I, I didn't realize that. I thought, I, I didn't count, I guess, but I assumed that each motor slot was assigned to its own driver. So it hasn't been going bad, uh, but definitely a bit of, um, Two things, if you, if you fry the fan MOSFET on the Fly 3 board, uh, all the fan MOSFETs are quick swappable. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so we burned up a MOSFET. Scroll up and read my message. Okay. We'll read your message and then, oops, that is not. Let's see. Okay, here we go. There is no standard pinout for HTE motors. You need to check with the diode so you see what you are the correct phases for the motors. Put the wire on the motor, take a normal. Oh, the um, these motors though are all the exact same Creality motors from the exact same vendor. So I'm not worried about that. I usually, um, in the past when I've had to check it, you just, I usually just use my continuity checker on the multimeter to find the matching pairs of the wires and then just pair them together and invert them in firmware if needed. <clears throat> That's good to know though. See, let me read it one more time. There's no standard pinout for the motors. 
So you check the diodes so you can see the wire correct phases for the motor. Yeah, I usually just use the um, continuity for finding the pairs for the stepper motors when I've, when I've needed to at least. All right, let's see. If you have not hit the like button, please hit the like button. We are trying to get to 100 likes. Also, uh, looking at the giveaway, there are 69 people entered. Nice. Uh, if you have not entered in, we are going to be drawing in. We're going to we're gonna give it a few extra minutes today. I would say 15 minutes uh, from now, we'll be drawing for a spool of Polymaker filament if you're interested. Uh, let's see. Oh, nice. All the cool people are here now. <laughs> uh, put two videos of the most used carry... Oh, uh, I put two videos of the most used carry versions of the baby sling. They're okay, but a bit slow. I can make a custom video for you if I do it. Oh, uh, for carrying the baby? Is that what we're talking about? If so, I'm definitely interested. Uh, definitely good progress, zombie. Uh, we've got XY working, extruder working, Clicky showing. Um, Clicky's not docking correctly yet, um, but it's, it's connected correctly now. And then two of the Z motors are working, and we're going to find out if the third one is as well. And if it is, we're going to try to run Clicky again. Okay, so yeah, this should be the first motor. Nope, that's not what I wanted. What's the form? Um, no, nope, nope, yes. Where this should be Z1. Uh, let's have you guys look at the motors that way. It's probably more exciting than just looking at that. Okay, so if this motor, oh, it's already, already had it ready. So if this works correctly, then we're happy. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. That looks good to me. Sweet. So all of the Z-axis motors should be good to go now. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at it, Woody. Um, if anything with carrying and tying of the baby, I'm interested in. Because uh, for that one, I think we just referenced the black and white um, manual. I'm going to throw chapstick. My lips are killing me. And I'm going to grab coffee because I don't have enough energy. It's sarcasm. I feel, <laughs> I feel pretty... Uh, pretty awake but one second ah. okay so when i get back we'll try to home the clicky and see if that works and then move on to getting the hydra finalized which the motors are working which is awesome let me take my mic off for one sec I'll be right back everyone I didn't even have to leave the room. Aaron said he want coffee. Forgot she always has the stream on. Ah. All right, well, we're not going anywhere. We're just gonna do the thing. Uh, looks like you need to invert that motor. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right, let's 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 just, I just wanna send it. We're just, we're going for it. Will we? We actually might need to invert the motors because Del Mar said Del Mar said for Z it should go down and then up. It looks like it is going down and then up. All right, let's try. Let's see what happens. Let's go here. I'm gonna click home. I'm gonna have emergency stop ready. Why does she watch the stream when she can get it live? She doesn't want to be in here with all of the uh, all the lights and stuff. Is it not? Huh. Okay. Nope, nothing was right. Inverted. All right. Clicky is working. Motors are moving. We just need to invert the direction. Yeah, you were right. I thought you were joking. I, I don't know if it was the emoji you used or what, uh, but I thought you were joking. Oh, zombie. Um, I don't know when you said, oh, gotcha, I'll take a look what that was in reference to. Right after you left earlier, somebody came in here. I think it was Cubing Elite. Um, and said that he's either working on or a dev on a KP3S, I think it was a KP3S Core XY thing. I feel like with 
Um, I feel like it's something that you would be interested in. So I, I, when you left earlier, I thought, oh man, zombie just left, but uh, hey, Joe's here. Everyone say hi, Joe Spanier. <clears throat> if it wasn't for Joe, I would not have been able to cut out the panel for this printer. Uh, at least I wouldn't have had the confidence to cut out the panel for this printer. I, I, I had mentioned, you'll I actually, you'll see Joe pop up in uh, not this week's, but next week's video because he gave me some awesome pointers on um, speeds and feeds and what is needed to cut acrylic. I've always used lasers for it in the past. So I was definitely nervous. Acrylic is not cheap. The sheets I bought for this and the other mod I did was like 50 bucks. So um, yeah, Joe is awesome. And Joe helped me out with that. Uh, oh, interesting. I'm interested in everything. Yes, I know you are zombie <laughs> as we all are. Okay, let's go. There's been a quirk, so I keep it here for a while based on the V0.1. I, I have never heard of it until right now, or until today at least. Okay, so Z, direction pin. We're gonna invert this really quick. Invert, direction pin. Invert, direction pin. Invert, direction pin, bam. All right, save and restart. Okay, so let's see now if it homes correctly. So now the bed should drop. Yep, bed is dropping, good. Ah, oh, let's see. Uh, is the bed stiff enough with those linear rails? It is pretty dang stiff, yeah. Okay, we're going up, we're going up. Hit the probe. Hopefully it'll hit the probe, it's at a pretty good angle. <laughs> Yay, cool. Okay, so the things I think the order of operation now is to turn this, um, well, turn this off or at least do this. So let's go disable motors. Um, this clicky dock is too far out for this new bed. So we definitely need, uh, if I turn it like this so we can see it. Um, I need to remove this. We'll turn the printer off to be safe. I don't want fans moving. There's been a couple times where I've put an Allen key or a driver through a fan and every time it could have been avoided by just turning off the thing, so. <clears throat> yeah, it looks, it's looking awesome. Definitely thank you for your help, Delmar. Uh, I have the same problem, interested in everything. Well, I will say it's, it's cool. Um, it's cool to have a lot of interest versus not a lot of interest, right? Like. I, I'm fairly similar where a lot of things excite me. Like I just get super pumped about like, I mean, most people that are passionate about something and they show it to me, I get pretty excited because it's sort of like contagious, that energy. Um, but man, I, I'm the same way. There are so many things that just like, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's awesome. ADHD gang. Yep. <laughs> I use a company where I get different acrylic pages in different color sizes I need. And with that, I can also set a price if people want acrylic. Oh, cool. That's red. So you're saying you can do them. Well, they do, they won't, they'll do actual cuts though, because the, um, the panel for this, like, you know, for the Voron, a lot of the panels that I've seen are just rectangular panels. Well, this is, you know, it's got, can't really see it because it's clear but it's got some more different shapes to it you know curved edges and uh, to go around the printed motor mounts uh ups panel okay uh i'd say five more minutes and then we will do our giveaway um for a spool of filament if you have not entered in do so now and I'm going to, this is so, it's really awkward trying to, uh, it's gonna be awkward me trying to get this um, dock off because of the angle at it in the camera. So let me come around to this side. We're gonna install the smallest dock, which is right here. Thought I lost it because it. All right, underneath the HDMI cable, don't hit the tripod that's on spools of filament, and here we are. Okay, so these, let's push this back, I suppose, probably easier like that. That looks like we need a 
2.5. Yes. Do I already have a magnet in here? Oh no, we don't. I'm, I'm just kidding. That's off. And that is going to be maybe a three. How the hell will I get them? Oops. I must have used a, yeah, I must have used a ball head to get that on. Let's see. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, out with the old. The reason why we use this one for anyone that wasn't here is when you use the stock um, bed setup, the the metal arms that grab the linear rods are they protrude quite a bit, and so if you don't have the longest stock, your tool head will crash into it. But now that we don't have that, and we have the Hydra, and we have a bigger build volume uh, that is no longer needed, and so we're going to swap it out for this, which is you can't see anything, can you? I don't I have no idea if, <laughs> with this guy. Uh, is that panel, is that panel from Fabrico? No, no, that panel's from my garage. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I cut that out last night. Um, I ordered the acrylic, I found, I, I looked around a little bit for acrylic and shipping is definitely the most expensive part of it, but I found on Amazon uh, two three millimeter thick pieces of acrylic that were 24 by 36 inches. And I want to say I paid like $50 shipped for the pair, which is seems pretty fair for, again, what acrylic goes for. Uh, so yeah, those came in and then um, Turtle sent me um, the link for the GitHub that had the a pretty high resolution PNG file. So I, um, I traced the PNG file in Lightburn to turn it into a vector and then took that vector and... Um, put on a, I think it was a 60 degree V carpet and just had it engraved like 0.2, no, 0 0.02 of an inch into the acrylic for the the logo. And then um, used a O flute for the, used an O flute for the cutting out. And it turned out really good. I think um, I could have probably ran it quicker. I was a little bit slow with the, um, I was a little bit slow with the engraving, um, but the whole thing took no more than like 10 minutes top. So, okay, let's get this installed. All right, this is perfect. Just gives us a few millimeters or so of clearance. Maybe a little, no, more than that actually, I lied. It probably gives us about 10 millimeters of clearance. Okay. Alrighty, just slap it onto there, like that, bam. Yep, plenty of space, awesome. Well, it was a happy accident that uh, I printed out, oh God, don't hit the truck, that I printed out the um, small dock before doing the correct dock. All right, let's do this giveaway. <clears throat> oh. So, yeah, well, we'll talk more after, let's do the giveaway. 
Uh, in the garage, I have a Shapoko Pro, which is awesome. I got it in last November and man, it is it is just so rad. Big build volume, 33, or cut area, work area, 33 inches by 33 inches. And um, it, it just, it's a beast. Okay, so giveaway time. Let's see, how many entries do we have? We have 95 entries. 96 entries. All right. 97 entries. All right, this is it. Whoever, whoever comes in after this. 97 entries. Bam. There we go. 97. <laughs> You got me, Nuno, because I thought you were saying wait. Yeah, I thought you were saying wait in reference to like, wait, you got a Shipoko? Uh And then about <laughs> as I was looking at the names, I saw your name pop up and I was like, oh, he was telling me to wait so he could sneak his entry in. Alrighty. <laughs> so as always, thank you very much to Polymaker for being a sponsor of the channel, allowing us to give away a spool every single week on our Wednesday stream. Uh, they provided all of the filament for the Mercury 1.1 build, which has been awesome it looks really great the white and the dark gray i think looks sweet i went with a less um less aggressive in, t in color look with this kind of a little stealthy build um yeah if you have not used their filament there is a link down below and it is awesome stuff if you do end up purchasing filament it does support the channel which is always um appreciated but on that note let's go ahead and do this uh for anyone that doesn't know i will reach out to you via email typically same day and uh, you'll just need to fill out a form with some info and polymaker will take care of the rest so all righty here we go let's shuffle it let's see how many times do we want to shuffle it uh i'll shuffle it 22 times one two three four five six all right good luck everybody three two one there we go Yeah, and you know, totally sidetracked me to stall for time. It wasn't apparent to me until I saw his name pop up and I was like, ah, Brian T, you are our winner. Let's do a little confetti action, a little bit of fireworks. Congratulations, Brian T. Um, I, that's fireworks, it's the wrong one. Uh, so I will send you a message later today. And uh, yeah, you, if you're in the US, uh, so they change things up. I won't, I won't announce this every time because it feels like a lot to say every time, but um, the way they do it now is if you're in the U.S. or Canada, instead of getting a spool of filament, you get $35 coupon code and free shipping. Um, and that's really cool because it does cover all of these standard filaments, but it also means you can use it towards a filament that normally you wouldn't be able to get, like a carbon fiber if you want to pay the difference, or uh, you know, just something like a uh, exotic filament or a non-normally covered filament. If you're anywhere else in the world, it's the same way where... Hey, Daniel, I like your name. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you for the involvement. It is really appreciated. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, wow. Thanks, Mod about Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Polymaker. So uh, it says, uh, I just say discount. Okay, discount code for US and California site and um, regular spool, how we normally do it for everywhere else in the world. So, yeah. I, 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 uh, if not, if not zombie, I think I need to record a script uh, to, to go over the rules. And every time the giveaway is in the goal, I'll hit the soundboard and just have it. This is the official terms and services for Polymaker giveaways as of February 8th, 2022. <laughs> or something like that. Anyways, okay, right, let's, uh, let's get back to it. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Congratulations. Um, congratulations. And again, I will send you an email later on today. Oh my God, just play a video, genius. Yeah, I, I should totally, it'd be pretty funny to do like a, um, like some sort of a skit or even where it's just like me with a suit just reading the rules and it says on the outside like Polymaker official rules and regulations. I'll record one and send it to everyone. Yeah, that would be, be sweet. The uh, Stream Deck does soundboard stuff and I, you know, I only use it for a couple of sounds. So I've definitely got a slot there. Okay, um, so the no now what we're going to do is we are going to power on the printer and home the printer. Let's see. I don't think we need our old config anymore. I think we've we've taken all of the things we need, so I can free up that Raspberry Pi for something else. Uh, question: What is the PTFE tube on the spool holder for? 
uh, the PTFE tube, it's a guide tube. So, um, basically, I don't know if you're familiar with like a reverse Bowden or guide tube setup. If not, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. So, PTFE, super low friction, Teflon, very slippery, which is what you want. You don't want any friction between the extruder and the filament spool. So, the spool holders on this all ride on 608 bearings, which means that they're, you know, really, really sleek. Um, however, you still have the distance from the filament coming off the spool to the direct drive extruder. And so uh, what really I should be doing if I was using the setup correctly would be removing this little guy and putting this guy in here. And so all that it does is means that you don't have to worry about the filament either getting tangled on stuff or causing any additional friction by rubbing on things. Like when I had the spool hold originally mounted down below, it was rubbing on like the belts and the motors because it was just able to do what it wanted to. And so with the guide tube, low friction and a controlled path for the filament. Um, but it doesn't, it's, it's, it's not a requirement. Um, I, I would say you at least want a little guy like this to help guide it in. Um, so it doesn't rub on the extruder body, but yeah, it's purely for getting the filament in with as little, uh, complications or, or sidetrack routes as possible. Oh, yep, yep, I will remove the pin. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Usually Alien reminds me, but he's been sick for for a long time. Um, uh, perhaps you mentioned it, but are you going for a full enclosure? So I would love a full enclosure on this. The fact that it's all printed in ABS, it's big, it's got an AC bed, the electronics are enclosed down below. It is all the workings of a machine I would like to enclose. Um, I don't believe there is anything official right this second as far as enclosures. There's some, uh, definitely a fair amount of users that have enclosed theirs. Um, I know that uh, Turtle uh, completely tore his down and went with like a custom extrusion frame setup to be able to do it. Um, so the answer to that is maybe. Um, I would like to, yes. The, the, in its current state, the complications I can see would really be getting around the motors on the backside. It, you would need like a bottom body panel and a top body panel based off what I'm seeing here. Um, that's really the most difficult part, I think, um, is really that the back part with the motors, getting around that. Um, I mean, I guess these are kind of in the way, but you can probably incorporate this into the hinging system or no, it wouldn't even be an issue. So yeah, I, I would love to, I would love to enclose it, but I'm also not in a rush. I do have like um, other printers that can print ABS, so. But I would love to. Yeah, that is a short answer. Uh, you're gonna love the mix six bed. I'm printing my rat rig parts in, on it right now on ASA. Oh, sweet. Um, on your Ender Five CNC. Uh, he he. I'm already in there. I might have a friend that will order. Uh, okay, let's do this. So we're going to Home X and Home Y. Wait, what just happened? Oh, I, it's because I manually, okay, one second, let's do this. I threw an error because I had jogged it beyond where it, it should have gone. Okay, X, Y. Okay, so now, if I am not mistaken, basically all we're gonna do is jog the tool head until it picks up the dock. Uh, that looks pretty aligned and then let's bring it in Oh, interesting. So our limit switch is our limiting factor. Okay, so I need to move the limit switch further back now that we've got this bigger bed. Um, oh, the, the clicky probe, I also just realized that that clicky probe is definitely going to limit our build area a bit, uh, at least in that corner. Uh, that's gonna be something to watch out for. I'm almost wondering if we can go with an even shorter dock. 
we'll start with it like this um we'll start with it like this but yeah i'm looking and like when it grabs when it's over the dock area we're still like 30 millimeters into the bed at least so all right so i'm going to uh, go straight to beacon the 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 concern <laughs> we'll see <laughs> I've got, I've got, uh, I know Beacon requires a fork of Clipper, um, and I don't want to do that until I've got everything on this working really well before I consider it and save the config and all that. Okay, that should be plenty. Isn't there a Trident Clicky Pro that rotates away from the bed to avoid the issue? Well, there is, um, there's definitely Clicky Probes that use servos. It's, a, that's a setup I'm running on my Trident, which so we could do, yeah, like a servo thing. Uh, yeah, there are definitely setups like that. But I don't, I don't really want to run a servo setup on this. And we do have the, um, we do have the beacon. Uh, like Marcus, uh, Marcus, Marcus said, uh, and David, can't do auto Z. Yeah, can't do auto Z with Beacon. Although I don't really, I don't care that much about auto Z. I, I know that a lot of people really like it and I, not saying it's not an awesome thing, but I, what's happening? Probe triggered. Wait, what? There we go. Yeah, but I, I haven't used it. And so I don't feel like I'm missing out on a ton right now. Oh shoot, that's not what we want to do. Oh wow. It almost worked just because of, all right. Use an Evatilla and reuse your BL Touch. I don't, I'm not a big fan of BL Touch. I, I'm, I mean, I guess I, I understand. Yeah, in this case, not losing build volume could be worth it, I suppose, but I just, I don't see why we couldn't bring this further back. Um, wait, we totally could bring it further back. Do we even need the extension? I'm almost thinking, hold on. Uh, I've installed tap on my Merc. Didn't need to touch. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm just I'm just thinking thinking out loud here. Okay, so that's how far it can go. So we definitely would need. We definitely still need a dock, uh, other than like a dock extender. But we can certainly go shorter than this by. Uh, I don't know, eight to 10 millimeters it looks like. So I might end up doing that in the future. For right now, let's just let's just do this because it, it's what we've got. And also, since I don't know if we're going with Beacon, we're probably going, we're probably going with Beacon. So I don't care too much. I, I use a front mount clicky on the Eva. Yeah, the shroud, the shroud is moving, is what's um, preventing it from moving further back. Okay, let's do this. on my tippy toes. Okay, that looks pretty well centered. Let's bring it back. Nope. Oops.
Okay, so that's as far as it's going to let me go right now. Which is X11 and Y230. So. Hey, what's up, Panzer? All right, clicky, clicky variables. Dock location, all right. So dock location is great. Why didn't I, one sec. It was X11, Y230. Oh wow, X is the same, Y is just 230. That makes sense. All we did was go further back, I suppose. Okay. I think we've got it. Wait, what? What? What did we? Oh, I think it was because of the fact that it had it. All right, let's try one more time. Hold one more time. Uh, try mounting clicking on the front rail instead of the back rail, more room freed up. Yeah, I, I'll play around with it. Um, I'll definitely play around with it and see. There we go. Oh, we got it. Clicky on. The issue is though, if I mount it on the front, I think I'd lose more space uh, because of how big the bed is. The back definitely has a much further gap. Mounting it off the side could be an option as well. Okay, so at least we've got Clicky working. Clicky in its new position is working. Um, so let's try, let's see here. Scott sent me his, um, Until Try Z tilt. Oh, that's for a 250 bed. Oh, okay. So it won't be fully correct then, because we have a 275, I think. Um. Z positions. Stepper Z mini tank. Stepper Z. What is the easiest way to get these values then? Just manually jog the nozzle over? Uh, let me pull the other one. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Scott. I think what I'll likely do is just make a different, um, I'm probably just gonna remix the dock that's in here, if possible. Uh, I might have to do a slightly different, different design on it, but um, to see if I can at least squeeze those eight millimeters out that we're losing. Um, we'd still lose a little, and I know someone, uh, I think it was Turtle that told me we would lose some with, um, with the 275 bed on an Ender 5 um, frame with the clicky, but if we can, if we can lose a little bit less, uh, I think that'd be cool. Uh, 270, okay, cool, thanks Scott. 
<clears throat> Let's see. There we go. Let me close the other one so I don't confuse myself. All right. Oops. Easy tilt positions. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, oops, let's go side. Let's try to Z tilt. Uh, I prefer PLA Pro. Anyone see that level Calf Gaming got into 3D printing? I don't know what or who uh, level cap game is. Same as we would be manually jog the head. Okay, that's kind of what I figured. Uh, I prefer PLA Pro. Okay, I think I'm caught up. <laughs> All right, let's see. Z tilt. So I think probably have to throw an air right with the helmet. Nope, yeah, home first. Figured. Okay, let's give this a go. Hey, uh, Scott, are you are you running clicky on your 275 bed as well? And if so, did you do anything special to the dock or are you just using the shortest one and just kind of like, you know, the lost build volume is whatever, it is what it is. So I think that, I think that this dock can get shrunk down and lose less build volume uh, by a little bit. Okay, so that worked. Let's try Z tilt now. Ooh. Ooh, that was probe triggered. Interesting. What happened there? I'm gonna drop the speed down. Let's see if that does it. Cause that was the same. It looked like the motor skipped steps. Uh, just the shortest have not ran into an issue where I've run into the dock. Log. Okay, gotcha. I mean, realistically, I don't think I will either. I don't often print things that are that big. Um, yeah, I don't really print things that are that big. this again. Okay, so I think the issue with the Z-Tilt is that it's not grabbing, let me see here. It's not trying to grab the probe, which I think, quad gantry level, no, clicky probe, Z-Tilt. Uh, you can get rid of the quality inside corner braces and move the dock closer to the edge of the frame. Oh, yeah, that that would save some space. I did, but I purchased the um, I purchased the black corner brackets too off of Amazon, so I, I should do that then. Because yeah, I'm looking right now, and if I move if I move that and then I, I use the corner brackets underneath instead of on the inside corner, it would it would it would make a pretty substantial difference. So I'll end up doing that. Uh, there's something mesmerizing about the docking process. Oh yeah, I, I love, I, I don't, I love the clicky probe and the docking process. It's, it's wicked cool. Let's see. I'm not sure though what I need to change. Um. Uh, 
could be... Nope. Nope. Okay. Z tilt adjustment. So that should enable this. I think that might do it. Maybe not. I thought it was going to add it down. Huh. Clicky probe. Okay, that added that. It's under variables. Doesn't show it next to home. It does show it next to home, but the behavior isn't what I'm expecting. I can show again. So let's go save and restart. Like, I, I'm anticipating that it needs to go towards the dock. So it's right here. Um, let's go home all. Maybe that is it. Maybe just by doing that, it, it overrided the, uh, what it was doing before, but. Hey, what's up, Dutch? Oh, you can go here. See that did it. I don't. I don't know if by just enabling that it over it was overriding the existing Z tilt, so that way it uses the probe instead. We'll see. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, that's too far back. I think. Yep. 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 Okay, at least we got that though. Um, where it's a step in the right direction. So, so that is what it did then. Uh, now let me go to, let's see. Let's quickly dock the probe. Uh, no, we can't do that without homing everything, can we? All right, home. Okay. Probe location is step in Z. Wait, did I not change out? Did I not change out the values you sent me? No, I did. 135, T21. Okay, so mine must be a slight different location then so I would say um, I need to change the Y ever so slightly so uh, if this says 221 that doesn't make sense to me though but, um, locate probe location stepper Z how can it think that that's 221? <clears throat> All right, let's try, um, let me just change this to two and then see what happens then. Cause we were close to hitting the edge of the bed. Um, yeah, let's try it and see if it does it. I also need to adjust. I haven't changed the fact that like the build size is bigger now, so I need to change the end stop values and things like that. So uh, let's try this again. It was working, which is good.
Check your min and max for X and Y on your axis and moving the end stops moves everything if you're using end stops as max. Yeah, that I think that's what definitely screwed it up. I also know that the min and max values are set to the original bed, which is 235 versus 275. So I'm gonna have to play around with those a bit. Um, I think, let's see if this does it. Okay, so that did make a difference. We are hitting the bed now. Barely hitting the bed. Yeah, so I need to adjust those. That's gotta be what it is. And that hit before it moved. Cool. Okay. It's definitely, it's all end stop related. It's, it's definitely all end stop related. Okay, so. Uh, let's go printer dot CFG. Might as well set the end stops then. Nope, that's why. So that's pretty close. Um, I'm gonna say maybe five millimeters less. Stepper X. The position of end stop is 280. So we'll say it's 275. Okay. And then for Y. Oh wow, yeah, why we need a lot more. Uh, well, not a lot more, maybe 20, I'd say 20-ish mil, maybe 20 mil. Yeah. Uh, what made you choose the Revo 6 and this hot end? Why didn't you choose a high flow hot end like the Mosquito? Uh, because although I do anticipate I'll be printing pretty fast with this, I, I, I more so want it to be a workhorse printer that I can just throw things at and count on it. And I had the Revo, I already, I, 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 <laughs> I've had it for one year and two months just sitting in a box. And so I figured it's compatible with this, let's just do it. Um, but yeah, if I was going purely for speed based off of everything I've seen, it wouldn't be my first choice. Uh, but again, I, I think that the convenience of being able to quickly swap things out on this, especially if I want to, I don't know, just print something large, um, it's, it's nice to have. Well, yeah, this is the Revo 6. I initially bought it to upgrade the Prusa MK3S and uh, I just never did it. Okay. So stepper Y is, let's say, position of end stops roughly 250. Position of min. All right, let's try this now. I'm gonna drop. Try 
drop this down a bit. Uh, I'm about to try my first Revo, should be fun. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints so far, um, other than the fact that it can't do abrasives, which I don't do a whole ton of, but man, I just I just like having the options, right? Like, um, not having the option, did I restart it? I think I did, but not having the option to do abrasives kind of sucks. Aside from that, I, I mean, it's it's sweet. Okay, the one thing I want to check too is with Scott's setup. Z tilt, Z tilt, speed, horizontal, move, and Z, 25. So it should be lifting 25 mil. Yeah, it should be good. All right, let's see if this does it. I feel like this is the one. The obsidian can do abrasives. The obsidian doesn't exist though. Yeah, I would, if the obsidian was something you could purchase, then I would say, sure, get the obsidian. But I, the only people that were able to get it were people that were Earth last year. Huh, that's weird. Oh, I moved, dude, it's because I moved things. All right, we have to do one more, uh, we have to grab our, our cookie probe spot one more time. way too not what I want to do okay that looks pretty good and then we need to go for the forward and the Y That's as far forward as we can go. So this is six and X and 250 and Y. That is our, should be our last, hopefully our last change. I say six and X and 250 and Y? Six and X and Remember, there we go. Six and X, six and X, there we go. Six and 250. Right, let's so change that value, save and restart. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I haven't, I've never seen an obsidian able to be purchased. Uh, they did pre orders, but I don't think they shipped any of them. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think they shipped any of the pre-orders that they took uh, a while back. So I could be wrong. I, I don't quote me on that. I, I don't know that for fact, but uh, I should have gotten a seed when I was at Earth. I did not. I ordered one in late October and I'm, yeah, yep. That's, that's what I remembered as well. If you, if you had asked me to bet money that it would take them this long to put them out, I would have probably bet money. <laughs> There's no way I, I just couldn't have anticipated. All right, here we go. Z tilt, everyone. Hold your breaths or, or cross your fingers. Don't hold your breath. It might take a little bit. Okay, so that now can go further back to where Scott initially had it. That is too fast. Yeah, stop. Okay. Well, it wasn't the final try, but we're making good progress. So the issue I'm having now is our drivers are skipping and I need to make the Z further back. We can do it. All right, so Scott, I'm gonna go back to Scott's initial, uh, uh, original spot, which was Okay, so speed is our issue. What is going on with our speed? Is it because we've got... Where's our stepper drivers? 
this this doesn't this isn't disabled, right? I think that. Uh, are you using end stops? Yeah, it's, it's using end stops. Uh, your printer has watched cars too many times and screams I'm speed. Yeah, I think. Um, I thought 999. Let's see. Is it just zero to disable it? Uh, disable skull. Zero means stealth chop is inactive. Okay, so that's let's disable stealth chop, uh, at least on X and Y. Zero. Run current is 0.8. That might be low. I wonder if there's recommended specs on. Um, Okay, so these are 1.8 degree. I don't even know if we have that set correctly. Um, Uh, should it be 1.2 amps? Yeah, I think I think that 0.8 is probably low, and it's probably for. Um, where is? Where did I just put the over here? 2.5 amp rated. Yeah, we should probably bump it a bit. 229 limited is 1.2. I'm gonna 1.1 just to be sure. Okay. I'm a, we'll go with 1.2. Especially if they're rated for double of that. At least on these two. On Z, I'm not really worried right this second. Okay, let's see what happens. I, I didn't know... Um, Rick, Rick looks like it's gonna be pretty decent. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, there was that limitation. This is the first time I've heard that, the 2209s. All right, here we go, veto. Okay, Scott's initial point is perfect now. Get right on the money. We're not skipping steps. But why is the... So I need to change the front position as far as uh, where it's probing at. But the thing that's confusing to me is, is it not dropping the Z in between? Or maybe, yeah, let me, let's try this one more time. So let's drop this back down. So this should be Z zero. 
So this makes me think that the issue is that I need my Y. I think I need to change my Y end stop value once again. Uh, is your probe nozzle offset correct? It should be. It, it should be. Oh, maybe it's. I'm pretty sure that it is. Okay, so with with Y. Okay, so we bump into extrusions. Tell them why one more time. <clears throat> okay, that's the absolute farthest point we can go. So it's not a matter of, oh no, Scott's settings are fine because the probe can't go any further. The arms will actually hit. So they have to be, it will, it's going to probe further back on the bed. All right. So a couple things I need to change. So maximum Y value is 245 because that's the absolute max we can hit. Um, Position of min should be zero. I don't know why that value is there. That seems right to me. Um, and since we're going with a smaller bed size, I imagine I need to change this to T16. The thing that's throwing me off is on the points, on the points for the axes, is this, is it the 216 on Y is not where it's probing at, is it? Okay, let's try, let's try. Let me see what happens now. I've changed, I don't like changing too many things. Uh, use a ruler off the front of the bed to see if the nozzle is there. Wait, use a ruler off the front of the bed to see the nozzle is there. How is your motor's wired? Left, left one. Uh, yeah, so I've got left one, rear two, and then right three. Which I think is the same as Scott's setup. So this time what I wanna do is I wanna, I need to pay attention to whether the bed is dropping in between each Z tilt. Because I don't understand why it's dragging. Oh, let's go through. Move out of range. Probably because I changed it again, isn't it? Yeah, uh, okay, so that makes sense. The reason why it's out of range is because it's trying to hit 250 and we just changed it to 245. So clicky variables, this should now be 245. Uh, you need to account for probe offset, Scott's Z tilt. You need to account for Z-probe offset. Okay, so it is Z-probe offset then. Let me see here.
it's weird to me that I don't have the Z offset set correctly. Using the lead screw position will work, but it will be slower to correct. Interesting. The position in Z tilt should be mini tank locations, not the lead screws. Got you, okay. I might need to change that up then. Okay, let me see. Center dot CFG. Uh, pro. Z offset. So my Z offset's commented out on, my Z offset's commented out on here, which is weird. Uh, this is the old config that I've been using successfully. And then on the new config, uh, it's which is going to be down by probe. Z offset's nine, so it's uncommented. Where would the Z offset be? Oh. So I generated the Z offset. This this is this should be the right Z offset then. Just a one millimeter difference. <clears throat> uh, go to Z tilt. Okay, so here's the... I'm curious, because I don't have, again, this is like, this is really my first time looking at, I'll leave this up, I'm gonna search something really quick here. Clipper, uh, Z tilt, documentation. Good tilt. Okay. So Z positions, Z adjustment. Eleven is way too close. You talking about for, for the bed mesh? And Z tilt. Yeah, it said 25. Yeah, tilt's at 25. That's what Scott had. That was Scott's value. <clears throat> Let's try it with the with the corrected Z. Um, with the corrected Z offset. Let's see what happens. I will still probably if you're saying that the Z points should be the coordinates for the tanks and not the lead screws. I might need to change that, but let's see if we can get it working. Um, let's see. I, fir uh, I first start with Z offset at zero when you build. Gotcha, okay. It should, I mean, I haven't changed anything hardware wise, so I think that it should be, in parentheses, should be safe to use the existing Z, um, Z offset. Okay, let's see what happens if I go Z tilt. Okay, that looks good.
Okay. So maybe it was just because of how far off that side was. Did it, did it crack the front left a little? I didn't even see it. Okay, so it's definitely off. It seems like it's correcting, it's getting worse. Yeah, stop, stop. So it seems like it's not correcting correctly. Motor order is off. Okay. Okay, so I have it set. Uh, so there was Z1 and Z2. I believe the order, the order is Z, um, so Z, Z1, and Z2 on mine. So let's see on Z2. Uh... Yep. So this isn't right. Positions need to be in the same order. Okay. So we're starting with front left, uh, lead screw location. So you were front left. Bam. Move you. Back should be fine. The last one should be fine. So it should just be that one. And then we'll do the same thing here. Oops. Shit. Okay. Um, check the pins in Scott's config versus yours for the Z motors. Uh, his are definitely different. I know for sure. I, I, I didn't use his pins though. Um, but yeah, his was, I think, uh, AB extruder and then Z, Z1, Z2. So that was different. Uh, let's see, NT, let's see. So 8.8 eight first. Wait. Yeah, 8.0 first, then 135. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, it should be fine. Okay, I do want to, let's see, save and restart. <laughs> I was looking at it, I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's not crashing, but I'm like, the, it's looking substantially worse. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. <sighs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I have you guys though. Man, I, just cause I, it's, I've never done any Z tilt stuff or um, configured any of this really. So Clicky's the extent of it with the servo. All right, try it again. I'm fixing your locations for mini take value. Okay, sweet. Thank you, turtle. <laughs> Change, change your name to, to Angel. <laughs> the amount of times you've helped me. <laughs> oh man. I had similar issues on my V2.4 quad gantry leveling. Oh, where it was correcting in the different order than, uh, than it was set to. The mod bot. Yeah, seriously, squad. Hey, Tim. That's why the community is so awesome. Yeah, the community is awesome. I try to help out as much as I can, but I absolutely get tons of help from lots of people as well. There's just so, there's so many like um, layers to 3D printing and the motion systems and their capabilities. Okay, so we're good on that. Let's try Z tilt and see what happens. Cool. That looks good. You're expecting it to go there.
It's correcting. It's correcting. Yes. <laughs> it's correctly correcting. It threw me. It threw me off so much watching it. Um, <laughs> watching it correct incorrectly. I'm like, this isn't right. Yeah, I'll have to bump, uh, I'll bump my Z speeds up a bit in the future. Well, that corrected incorrectly. Third error, no trigger on probe after fold movement. Interesting. Uh, wait, this is your first try Z printer. Uh, the exception to that is I have the second cube, but the second cube was already set, right? Like, um, because they provide the kit with all of the, pretty much all the hardware as far as electronics go, you just, like, I didn't have to configure any of that stuff because it's already set. Just increase the speed, uh, that feeling when something works. Uh, can you show your clipper screen again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Quick console. Oh, you can't see, can you? It's underneath it. Uh, bam. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is way better than a mesh setup, which is, I mean, I, I mentioned this, but like most of my printers are still i3 style. Like I have the V zeros, but neither of them have any kind of bed leveling. The switch wire, which is running the clicky. Um, and then the bamboos, which do their own thing. And then the second, which, yeah, so I, I don't have, I just haven't, uh, order, order seems off still. Okay. Well, I know that um, Del Mar mentioned, are you sure it's left, back, right for its order? Yeah, definitely left, back, and right, yeah, yep, yeah. no, nope, that, that looks correct. It's definitely left back right for the order. Um, yeah, because it looked like it was correcting itself, and then it, it did fine the first time around, the second time it was incorrect. Um, I know Delmar mentioned the pinouts can be different from Scott's, but I don't, I don't see anything referencing, one sec, let me move this, um, I don't see anything referencing the pinouts in this section. Grab my, I need to grab my stool for a sec. Ugh. Whew. Okay. So let's see. Um, machine. Turn out CFG. Wait a minute. No, no, no. That's that's. This seems like it should be here. Yeah, so um, is the correct order of operations to swap the points back so that way or should I swap Z positions? Because in my opinion right now, based off what I've got, it should be this guy up top. Nope, that's screwed up. And then this guy should be swapped with this. I think that would correct it because now we've got them aligned with each other, the points in the Z positions. First position is eight, eight. Yeah, first position.
swap Z positions. 8, 8, 135, 62, 216, and then 2168. Gotcha. Wait. <laughs> Your Z positions and points need to match. Wait, you're saying these two values, so like this value and this value need to be the same? Uh, your numbers are all are all a mile off. Points do not need to match. Okay, points do not need to match. So I, I'm going to update to what you're saying, Turtle. Um, it looks like you're saying 8-8. Eight, eight. The values that you're posting are the points or the positions. So your 8-8, eight, eight, it looks like you're saying that should be 8-8 eight, eight instead of 8-0. 135, 262. So this should be changed. That doesn't, I feel like it's going to go off the bed if I do that. And then 262 and 8. Nope. And 8. <clears throat> Point order does not matter. Okay, so let's not do anything with points then. So the values you're putting your position values in? I, first C position is where the tanks are. Then the points is where on the bed you probe. Gotcha, okay. So the value you're providing then is the tank position. So we're moving away from the lead screw position to tank position, and that's what those values are. Yes, and we need the positions to be the tank locations. Gotcha. Okay, which is what you wrote down. So the tank locations are 88, 135, 262. I'm gonna need to dive into this uh, later on to understand a bit more, or just to understand how it's all working. Two sixty-two eight. Still not sure if that's right. <clears throat> is that all that needs to be updated? I'm still not entirely sure that that's right, but it seems like that's what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> I need to have a, um, I need to have a hotline for, uh, for things like this. Cause some things are just very difficult to understand from text, uh, to understand text to like for me trying to read it and decrypt what's happening and you just have like a hotline all right let's try this again Ugh. i could feel <laughs> i could feel turtle yelling at me through the screen uh, let's do it all righty i would change the points to be more inside the bed Update the notes that they should all be in order. BZ1, BZ2, okay. We change the points to be more inside the bed. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, or yeah, or Turtle should start a stream. This is Turtle's helpline. How can I help? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. All right, here we go. Edges of the bed are not the best spots to probe. Gotcha. Okay. Well, at least if it's working, I, I, I'm fine with tweaking things. Like, I'm fine with spending a lot of time tweaking things. I just want to make sure that, like, the basics are working. And then we can work on... I can work, I can work on optimizing it. I have mine X30, Y30, um, then X75, Y35. The bed is 275 by 275, but you don't, I don't get to print on the entire thing. I'm curious to see for fun how flat the bed just comes up as. Um, wait, what just happened? Oh, I guess it, it homes after. I try to limit my print area to 270 by 270. Yeah, I also, um, Scott had a good point. And if I move the bracket right here in the corner and then slide this all the way over and replace it with those aluminum brackets I bought, I can get the tool head more so off the bed. I wouldn't be losing quite as much space because right here in its current spot, it loses quite a bit of that back left corner. Okay, let's try, um, let's try to do a bed mesh. Move out of range. All right. Ah, mesh max, that's why. Our mesh is probably going to be quite off too, but uh, as long as the things are working, I'll spend, the t I'll spend time between now and next stream my game plan is next stream we just print and have fun and do just have fun <laughs> next week. So I've been messing three by three. Okay. Uh, three by three. There we go. Make it a little bit quicker. So X25, Y25, uh, three points. Then you have 25 mm into the edge of the bed. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, my clicky with the T75 bed was at X minus seven. Uh, it works, update the notes. Oh, yep, yep, yep. One second. All right, uh, Delmar is teaching me good habits. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is stepper Z. This is stepper Z1. This is stepper Z2. Uh, probe location, uh, left, rear, right. Yep. Oh, no, no, but this, these are, um, Good habits would be separating all this stuff. Different. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Um, I've been looking. I've seen a few other people's configs, and I'm like, man, these are prettier than mine by a lot. All right, let's try this. Tank positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mini tank location. Okay. All right, let's try it. Let's do it. Let's do the thing. Pipe map, calibrate, calibrate. 
No. What is out of range? What? What am I missing now? Oh, the negative value. That's right. Um, why is it a negative value? Why is Y at a negative value? Meshman X45 Y20. Oh, is it because it's because of prolification, isn't it? Uh, where? Nope. Ah, probe offset. That's, that's gotta be what's causing it, right? Are you still setting up the bed mesh? Uh, I hate how Clipper handles probe offset with bed mesh and Z-Tilt. Yeah, let me see if I set this to zero. I think that's what's causing it. No. Because if Y offsets at 28 and it's trying to do a bed mesh at no, XY 20, I would need to be able to go negative. I don't think I need to change that. Let's just start, let's start this at 30 for now. I'm pretty sure that's what's conflicting. All right, let's see if we start. Uh, no, we got, we got Z tilt working, zombie. But with the different settings, because we changed, or I changed a lot of settings for the new bed, the old mesh doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, that seems fine. That's what I did. Cool. All right, try it again. Yeah, Z tilt's finally working but I need to adjust the tilt points, probably increase Z speed. I still need to move the clicky again, or I need to move the clicky. In steppers, the update, homing speed eight from LDO tried and config. Okay. Uh, I usually probe like 10. I usually probe like 10 from the corners on max travel. Oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah, it's the big change is that we went from that 235 bed to the 275 bed and also moved the end stop, at least the um, the Y end stop and the clicky dock. Okay, let's try <laughs> see what happens again. Height map, side, calibrate. <laughs> Thank you, zombie. There we go. It's moving. All right. Thank you very much, zombie. Eat your popcorn and watch this show. Uh, okay, eight, um, homing speed eight. I will do that then. Not starting over. <laughs> I'm not starting over. Yeah, I need to change the points up a bit, but at least we're, at least we're doing it. <laughs> thank, thank you for the popcorn, zombie. Popcorn sounds really good. All right, let's see what we've got. Uh, ooh, that is a steep range. All right, let's run, let's run Z tilt again. It does not seem right. Uh, Z tilt. Aaron says I'll be making lunch soon. Nice. That sounds awesome. I'm definitely getting hungry. That looks like a twisted frame. You can try a four point Z tilt to diagnose the twist. <laughs> Very 
I just saw the pop one. Thanks, zombie. <clears throat> I eat uh, Bueller and watch the Monbot. Ah, oh, Bueller. So you think the frame is twisted, huh, Turtle? You can try a four point Z tilt to diagnose the twist. How would I? Oh. Gotcha. Have it go. Interesting. Try one more height map just to see what happens. Uh, first, let me do what Del Mar said and change the homing speed. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, homing speed is eight. Isn't that what you said to change it to? Uh, Del Mar, Del Mar. Hey, what's up, Adrian? It's been a pretty eventful, it's been a pretty, it's been a firmware stream. Stands for humming speed, eight. Huh, it is eight though. Probe speed. Um, probe speed is... Try it one more time. Oh, go 10. I don't think it'll apply until I restart it, but it's just, it's nine points, luckily. I just probed a super flat rickety bed. It was less than 0.1 out. Damn. Sorry, I'm getting hungry. I'm also, I'm also sad because I, I, if Turtle's right and it comes back. Yeah, so it looks like Turtle's, Turtle's right then. It's the frame. Could it have happened when installing the Hydra? Uh, I don't know. I think that... Oh, you can't see the height map. Yeah, sorry. It just, it falls off. Um... The hydro is heavy enough to twist the frame out of square. Gotcha. So you're saying to do a quad tilt? Oh, fix blocking. Uh, 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 let's see. There we go. Yeah, I, I agree. Something, I don't see how the range, no, 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 not quad tilt, quad. Oh, quad points.
Uh, slide a couple pieces of paper under the foot at the high corner of the map. So... It looks like it's back right corner. <clears throat> yeah, it's 1.377 millimeters off, which is a lot. I might need to troubleshoot it offline and then figure out, hopefully, hopefully get some of it figured out by next week. Um, let's see, let's do the four point total, Z total, one point this one off. Did I do a Z consistency test? I feel like I have before. Um, show the Z tilt config again. Machine, turn on CFG. Yeah, maybe, maybe we troubleshoot it later on tonight. Um, so I'm definitely getting hungry and I think it's, I think we've been streaming for like three and a half hours. Let's see. <laughs> Dutch is here and I'm like, we're going to end it. It's a similar issue, but we cannot uh, adjust the gantry. So we have to shim the frame. Interesting. Is that, is that why, um, is that what Scott was talking about with putting a few pieces under the foot? Uh, let's see, is the first line under 0.86? Where, where, under point, no, it's 80. Check in pin post in the Trident Discord. Okay, in the, in the Trident Discord channel. Yeah, the bed's looking, the bed's looking. It's looking a little off Dutch, our height map. I can run the four point um, that you were talking about, turtle. Um, do I just, do I need to add a separate macro for that or do I just modify the three point Go to Z tilt. All right. I posted the link to my finger forward. Uh, we just need to change points. Oops. Let me put this over here. Oh, come on. Um, I posted the link to the live stream Discord. Okay. Live stream. Other trend have some items from. Okay, sweet. The channels. Fixing a wonky trident bed mesh. Okay, sweet. I will take a look at that a little bit later on too. Uh, are your tilt points correct? The bed looks flash, just tilted. You think it's because it's that far off the bed, Nevin? Forty five, eight oh, eight two sixteen, eight two sixteen. Nope. Ah. Uh. 
Uh, Modbot verified zero zero. The origin? Yeah, uh, as close to it's damn close to to spot on. T sixty one zero. Will it use? Why is this? That will work. Okay. So same thing, Z tilt and then and then mesh. You have a pro front left, back left, back right. It's probably your Z tilt being off. Yeah, it has to, oh man, I wish I had the mesh from when we were running the stock bed because it it, I, it wasn't, it definitely was not that bad with the stock bed. Uh, show the results when it's done in console, okay. just happened move out of range 216 by 261 by 25 ah so basically yeah, 261. Wait, that's supposed to be 216. No. Yeah, because my max for Y is 245. Two fifty, uh, two fifty was still an issue with something when I checked earlier. All right, I'm gonna home it and then run it again. Oh, yeah. So it was the two sixty one. Uh, 261 from Y was out of range. It should be 261, 216, X first. X first, Y later. Might have missed that. I think I, I think I've got it set correctly now. Let me see. Nope, that's not right. I was off the bed. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, X, Y. Oh. This should be, yeah, this is off. The third point is off. This is the fun, <laughs> we've been doing this, we've been doing this for hours. I think I gotta take a break. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna call it for right now. Um, I just need to like mentally step away from the printer for a little bit and then I'll come back to it. I'm hoping the game plan is that later on, well, I was right again, 261, 216. Yeah, that does make sense based off of... So X80, then we go to the back, then we go all the way to the right. Yeah, okay. No, 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 we're, we're, let's try one more time. One more time. I don't have to work tomorrow so I can be up late to help, okay. All right, last, let's, let's get, let's figure it out. Let's see what this shows up as a final thing. And then, and then I'll call it for now. Yeah, I want to eat some food and hang out for a little while. And then uh, a little later on, I can spend some hours on this. I'm hoping next week we're, we're just kind of printing and chilling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I, um, I usually hit a, uh, hit a breaking point where I'm like, all right, I've got to just step the hell away. Sometimes, uh, more often than not, I should have hit that breaking point well before I actually hit that breaking point. <clears throat> Usually wait till I'm like beyond frustrated. I'm like, ah! <laughs> All right, where will we hit the next one? All right, Nappin, yeah, Nap, you're right. Uh, and I'm on Discord, so just send a DM. I can always try to help if I'm awake. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I saw you tag too that you uh, you just need to run to the post. Let me know how much I owe you for postage for the candy when you when you get that. All right, I'm just gonna show the console. I didn't realize you were here. You were still here. I thought you dropped by, G Funny. Thanks for hanging out, man. Have a great week. Uh, well, glad this channel. Uh, glad I found this channel. I've been following your main for ages and never saw this one. Been fun. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Russell. We stream literally every Wednesday. There will be a pause shortly here once our our kiddo comes in the next probably two to three weeks or so. Um, but yeah, otherwise we stream every Wednesday. Um, a lot of times it's printer builds, um, sometimes like unboxings, and then occasionally just sort of hangout streams, which are a lot of fun. Okay, you need to shim the front you need to shim the front right. Fold some paper four times and put it under the front right foot. Okay. Could it be the surface that this is on? Um, like, could it, can... One second. Because this, this build surface, let's see. Let me see if I turn this like this. Nope, okay, so that's super wobbly. I'm curious to see how it changes this. Okay, so we've got an 11 or 8.96. Did you try leveling the bed? <laughs> Damn it, zombie. I moved my printer once and had a huge effect on the Z tilt. Yeah, um, this this surface sucks. It, it is it is super warped. But yeah, I still see what you're talking about as far as we got 9.4, 9.36. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're saying you're saying fold up piece of paper and go under front right. Um, I think I've got. I think this is already folded. Oops. We'll use this. You said, no, you said front right. Get a five pound sledgehammer, adjust the frame until it's square. Perfect. <laughs> uh, remember when you first built this, I still had your quartz slab. 
That's true, but I don't think we I don't think we mounted anything. Um, hi. I think it was all building off off of the printer, and then we built it on the quartz after. Uh, did you not replace the build plate with the mix six? No, I did. Okay, let's. We want to try just running Z-Tilt again and see what it shows. You said front right foot, right? Okay. Wait, front right? <laughs> oh man, we gotta call the stream soon. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Here we go. It was not under front right. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, your front right or my front right? All right. Let's see what this looks like now. Nine point three nine. Ten point one six. So that did help a little bit. Right, brought it down from 10.8 to 10.16. I've got, let's throw, let's throw some more paper. I've got four more pieces right here. There we go. So now this is eight folds. <clears throat> See what happens. Nine point five, ten point three. 9.8, 10.5. Do you need another banana? <laughs> Probably need more than that. Let it adjust. Oh, let it adjust. Okay. So we have about a 0.8 millimeter range now. Yeah, 0 0.79. 0 0.96. 0 0.97. 0 0.98. <laughs> yeah, so we're at 0 0.8 now. <clears throat> Can frame braces help with this or no? Double, double the shims. Okay. Um, let's see. Damn, that was a lot of paper. I don't have a lot of paper in here. I think that's all the paper I got. Um, I got one more piece over here. Okay, we'll run one final cycle. <laughs> My wife's, Aaron, Aaron's gonna, uh, Aaron's gonna come in here and drag me away. Uh, what do I have in here? All I, all I have is tax documents. I can't use these. Um, what is this? Affordable Healthcare Act. I don't need this. Perfect. Okay, two folds, four folds. And six folds. Or eight folds, I guess. Doubles. Uh. Alrighty, final try. Maybe brace. Uh, maybe frame braces help if it's built flat. Classic American, not thinking I need healthcare. <laughs> All right, let's do it last time.
Ooh, that's definitely better. We're down to, uh, what, 0.6? We'll see, I guess it needs to adjust probably too. Uh, what is mix six and EU standard AI and W use today? Yeah, it's it's a it's not it's an uphill battle. 9.7, 10.3, okay. The range one side's going up, one side's going down. Definitely better. We're we half of the half the tolerance range or half of the range we're at before. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm definitely curious. I mean, I would love to not have to shim the printer um, if I can disassemble something to help with help with making it so the frame isn't tweaked. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, let's chat. Uh, let's chat later on, Turtle. I'll shoot you a message um, a little bit later on and see what you're up to, and see what your thoughts are on what we should do. I wonder if the frame needed to be squared up better. Maybe. I mean, I I just I wish I had. Um, I feel like we had pretty good. I feel like we had a pretty good range of 0.3 or less on the stock and uh, creality bed. More shim, more better, yeah. Yeah, so we're at 0.54. Yeah, I'm gonna call it, um, I'm gonna call it on that. Uh, definitely, we're getting closer to the correct direction. So it is a tweaked frame, um, which is a bummer. <laughs> so we'll see, it's probably still 0.3, you just need different, different tilt config. What are your thoughts on that, uh, Turtle? Do you think that, do you think part of it could be the tilt config since we're tilting so far out or no? <clears throat> but yeah, I'm gonna call on that. Uh, we'll talk later on in Discord. Thank you everybody for hanging out. It was definitely longer than I thought. Um, everything is working. Everything is working, which is awesome. It's just a matter of now figuring out if I need to disassemble and reassemble some things or tweak a few things to figure out what's going on with the frame. Uh, but the good news is <laughs> once we're beyond that, we should be able to start printing. So I'm hoping that next week we'll start, or I'm ho hoping that next week will be just kind of like a hangout and print stream. Cause I think that, I think that a week off from building and just printing and hanging out will be really nice before, before the baby's here. So that's going to be the game plan. So uh, have you been just the frame out of square? Yeah. I just wonder though, again, if the, if installing braces to the frame could possibly help keep it squared, like, like applying some force from the braces and then tightening it down could possibly keep it squared. I'm also very interested later on when we test this out, I'm going to take it down, put the, um, the slab, the quartz slab that we built most of it on, on here and run it again and see if that corrects it and see how much of it right. Uh, might be the surface that it's on. So we'll try it later on. Uh, BZBot GitHub has braces. Yeah, I, I I think there's some that I, I've i saved somewhere. So anyways, thank you everybody. Uh, today was a lot of fun. Um, and thank you everyone for the support as well. There was quite a few new memberships and gifted memberships and donation and stuff like that. So uh, I will get next week's stream scheduled, but I'm, yeah, I'm gonna stop staring at the screen for a little bit or stare at a different screen for a little bit. Anyways, have a great week, everybody, and uh, talk to you guys all later on.